Good evening, everyone. A nice uh, wintry day in Middlesex, getting ready for a lovely storm when we're going to get to enjoy all four seasons of the year in about 24 hours. It's going to go from 50 degrees to minus 20 in about 12 hours. Get the sand pile ready. <laughs> and the generator's fired up. And the generator's fired up. Buy your, buy your, uh, buy your fuel early. Um, so uh, I will call a meeting to order. Uh, do we have any amendments to the agenda? No. And we do have uh, Ruben here with us. Welcome, Ruben. Hello. And we are happy to be together with you this evening. And you are number one on the agenda. Sorry for that. So <laughs> take it away. Um, OK. I guess I'm going to turn that around on you guys and ask what questions you have for me that I can answer for you. Um, I know that it, you know, a subset of this map, um, but I'm not sure where your deliberations or discussions or thoughts are at. So, um, so hearkening back to uh, the meeting we had downstairs whenever it was a month ago. Yep. I. Uh, I think, and I think we all felt after that meeting, and the board felt after we presented to them that we had largely had some miscommunication issues between your organization and us, and that was the source of a lot of the angst and unhappiness that was going on on both sides. And I, I believe, unless uh, someone feels otherwise, that we're that we're past that, and the billing issue was is resolved and understood and uh yeah i don't know if any other board members have any other i haven't yeah i haven't heard anything negative since then for me it cleared a lot of a lot of things up um good i know we changed some communication efforts and, and whatnot on our end yep. um so i guess it would be good to hear from your side if things are working well since then um but i haven't i haven't heard any anything on our end no, I agree. I think the, I think the big thing, Ruben, is to is to know what the what the plan is going forward. Sure. And to you know work together to implement that plan. And you know this is a good time because this is our budget time. We're trying to figure out our our uh, money, and we're aware of the server issue, but I'm sure there are other issues we need to be uh, aware of and concerned about. So. Yep. Um, so from my from from sort of. You know, my vantage point, I have seen that things appear to be working much better. Um, it seems like um, I'm, I'm not hearing the, the level of frustration that I was with, um, you, you know, getting responses to tickets and, and you know, stuff. So I, I guess I would sort of looking at you because I think you drew the short straw <laughs> in yeah, terms of interfacing with us. Yeah, we have one ongoing issue which is really it evolves into I think a bigger conversation. I have had an outstanding ticket now for I think it was the week after we met with you and it's regarding an email issue and um, I know Holland has been in contact with Rackspace and Rackspace has been back in touch with this one. The problem is it's still an outstanding issue and we seem to be getting no resolution. I don't want to put a million dollars into resolving this issue because I think the bigger problem that we have, which I think is something for discussion, is how happy people or unhappy people are with the email in place. I know there's been a lot of discussion that, you know, they can't get it on the phone or they can't get it on this computer. They can't, um, we can't easily go in and change email addresses. We had a security issue where we had to sign a document just so two people could be able to read the same email. Um, and those are, you know, I think as a board, you should look at, you know, what is the solution to that? And, you know, I know um, Phil spent a lot of time researching these different ones, and that was his recommendation, and we went with that. But 
as one of the users of it, and I've had several problems that I wanted to bring that up as something to discuss. And, uh, um, I am going to an express an unvarnished but um, data-backed opinion, um, which we expressed in the document that we required you to sign <laughs> when you moved to Rackspace. Um, it's not a great service. Um, it's very inexpensive, which makes it really attractive. Um, but I don't know if you saw the headlines two weeks ago, but Rackspace's entire hosted exchange platform got ransomware. Like, and that really sort of fleshed out what our concerns with their service have been right along. Um, they, they just don't take security. And the, uh, years ago, they had this this fanatical support mantra that they had that they beat their marketing drums about. And frankly, they were that was fair. Um, but that has not been the experience for the past several years. Their support is atrocious, and you know we're on the record, so I'm not going to go too far down the rabbit hole. But but suffice it to say, we made you sign a damage waiver when you elected to go with that service for a number of reasons, hinging on security. So our our opinion is that you should not use Rackspace. Um, our our further opinion is that you should pick one email service provider across the ecosystem of the town and use it. Um, and that does mean it's more expensive, right? It means that instead of, you know, maybe a couple of bucks a mailbox, it's several times that um, for even the basic mailboxes. But it does mean that you have one platform to secure, one tenant to handle, one set of maintenance to do, um, and it's going to follow the standards that when you do the passive survey, for example, about your cybersecurity practices, um, there are questions on there that you cannot answer in the affirmative, honestly. That's, that's not possible in, this, in the Rackspace ecosystem. Um, so, um, so again, sort of backing into that conversation again, that is why we sent the liability waiver saying, if you're going to require us to do this, we're going to require that you indemnify us from any damages that may occur from the use of this service. We just don't think it's the right service. And what would you recommend? You use um, Office 365 for some of your users now. Um, Office 365 is a premium service. It's much more expensive. I think it's eight dollars a month for a, a basic mailbox. Um, and depending on what your you know your needs are, you might actually need a even more expensive mailbox than that because you may want to be able to do things like archiving and discovery, so that if um, people are conducting town business using the email system, you can go back in time. And that is that's you know that is a select board decision. That's not an RB Tech decision, but um, but you can't do that with Rackspace. So if if I'm a Rackspace user and I go and I do something that I shouldn't using my town email address and I want to destroy the evidence, I can just go clean my mailbox out, and you oh, guys really? have no recourse. <laughs> um, so um, archiving and discovery is something that from a, you know meeting law, to just not even with open meeting law, but just best practice and protection of, um, of uh, town resources that you should consider, right? So that, so that an email user can't go in and just wipe their mailbox out and have the town have no re recourse. Do you have a sense of how many users we have underneath the current system? I, I don't have an exact number. I think at the moment it's a small handful. Um, I believe it's just the uh, just the town office. Fifteen, maybe or so. I think I it's less it, than that. I don't I think it's it's like, yeah, okay. It might be about eleven or something because it's 
all of the select board each has one. Um, but are the select board users on Rackspace? Yes, they're all, yeah, they're we're all on okay. Rackspace now. The highway department mm -hmm. has one. The listers have one. We have three listers or two listers, but um, they use the same mailbox. and. That's where we were having the trouble with the bookkeeper and I were using the same mailbox, but yet with the dual authenticity or whatever, we couldn't log in. We had that issue. So, um, so we probably have, I don't think. Um, and all the budget committees on a distribution list. Um, so they, they have, you know, they don't each have a, a mailbox. It just, just gets, gets just sent to yeah. them. Yeah. Um, and what did you say the cost for the 365 base the starting point? The exchange online is about eight or nine bucks a month for, per, per, per mailbox. And a mailbox, just to be clear about it, a mailbox is basically a person, yeah. right? So you can have a hundred mailboxes that are distribution lists and you don't pay for those. Right, so, so those don't cost you anything in the Office 365 world. Do you have an opinion of like uh, Google's G Suite and, and the services that they provide? My, my opinion boils down to, so fundamentally, no. Um, my opinion from an operational perspective is more that I really encourage clients to pick one or the other. And so if you have an organizational need for Word, Excel, you know, those office apps, that means that you're going to buy them online because you can't buy the standalone versions anymore, which means that you have to have an Office 365 tenant. And if you have to have an Office 365 tenant, then it really makes sense to not also have a Google Workspace tenant yeah. that you have to administer and do all of that stuff with. Not to say that you can't, but every piece of extra vendor complexity ecosystem is more stuff that you have to maintain and be responsible for and secure and do all of that stuff. So generally speaking, I really, uh, my, my encouragement is to pick one and stick with it. And generally, and, and Peter, you know, <laughs> I am not a Microsoft fanboy at all, um, but from a purely practical perspective and even from a security perspective, the less you have to secure, the easier it is and the less expensive it is. We just upgraded all the offices to 365, so oh. that part's already in place. Yeah, so that, that just makes sense to me. Yeah. If, if that's the recommendation, we're already utilizing that service. I mean, I think and the only reason that we did Rackspace was purely for the cost. We were like, okay, we all need to have an email that is not our personal email and it was, but also to his point, it was something about the backup that we had to, you don't get the backup or something with, there was some kind of, do you recall, Sarah, what that was? Or? You know, it's odd, because I remember it's too bad Phil's not here. Right. I remember Phil he was saying a, that one of the benefits of Rackspace was that there would be an archiving and system, because we were all using our private Gmails, mm -hmm. we were on Comcast, mm -hmm. and. So if we were all on our rack space, that would solve that, you know, the Hillary Clinton problem. Interesting. So, so I, to be 100% transparent, I am not a rack space administrator. So, so I could be incorrect on that. Um, but, um, but that potential incorrect statement aside, does not change our overarching organizational opinion of Rackspace and how they conduct themselves. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense to me with what you're saying. If we're already using 365 and we can get the service out of, out of that platform, um, it doesn't look to me, you know, based yeah. on what I understand, we pay for Rackspace, but there's a significant cost difference between the two. You know, if it's eight, nine dollars a user, I think we were paying one hundred and twenty dollars or something like no, that for rack space. I just noticed there. the bill today; it was eighty something. Okay. It's in the orders, but, but I mean, there's there's not a significant significant difference. And for me, if there's an ease of use and, and on your end, you know, uh, a simplicity that that comes with it from having everything kind of serviced together, it, it's a no brainer. 
So well, the other the other comment I would make, and I was, you know, I understood the reason why, but I was uncomfortable when we had to sign that indemnity agreement. I mean, that means if something bad happens and they get caught in the middle of it, we have to reimburse them for their expenses. Yeah. And I don't believe our insurance policy covers that. I would be surprised if it covers that. So that's going to be the full faith and credit of the taxpayers of Middlesex that are on the hook for that. Yeah. So it just it, for a lot of reasons, I don't think it I don't think it makes sense. And uh, to be honest, you know, we thought we were doing the right thing at the time. We all supported it, I believe, but it's just turned out between the problems and the other issues and your organization's discomfort with it. I think we need to move on. I guess the question is. What's the easiest and best way to do that? And what's the time? And you know, do we wait till we get the new server to do it? Do we do it as soon as we possibly can? I don't think they have a whole lot to do with each other, to be completely honest. Okay. Um, moving mail from one service provider to another really doesn't intersect with uh, with your internal infrastructure a whole lot. So here's I a will question. Say, can, we keep, can we keep our same email addresses? Oh, I have all these. Yeah. lingering dead email addresses and it's hard to kill them because yeah. people keep yeah, them and they keep the trying to no, use it will them. still be middlesexvermont.org yeah okay a different host um the reason i'm asking the question in this meeting is before budgeting for right exactly and, you know that's yeah. well um, part of the part of the discussion tonight is is to get an idea or at least give you the guidelines so you can get back to us with an idea not only of what we need to budget this next year, but what we need to budget going into the future for your capital plan. And so, the we will have to put a project together for um, with a quote, obviously, for an email migration um, because um, because in part sort of like you've experienced, right, depending on the type of connection that you have to the Rackspace email, that might mean that emails only exist on a workstation, which means that it's a much more labor-intensive migration than just pulling the email out of a mailbox over on this cloud provider and moving them over here. Uh, we have automated tools that can move from cloud to cloud. The automated tools will not move from a workstation or multiple workstations back up to another cloud. So as far as I know, and help me out during the, so I've had good success accessing uh, Rackspace on my laptop, my iPad, my phone, and I've used other computers when I've been out visiting my kids or whatever. Yep. And I hope and pray it isn't, it isn't keeping those emails on those devices. I don't think it is. Um, it's probably not the fact that you can see the same emails from multiple devices, right? But, but you can set it up in a way that that doesn't happen. So, like, if you know, if somebody logs in from another machine and now you can't see those emails, that's because that machine was configured in a way that it's actually pulling the messages down off. Yeah, yeah. that's not what's happening with our problem. Is I can't send an email from the treasurer's email to the treasurer email. So like if I want to converse, and I had always been able to do it up until mm -hmm. I want to say three months ago. Yeah. Um, so that's where we're having, um, because I, I want all the treasurer's business to be kept in, in the treasurer's spot. email. And just because the bookkeeper is, she's doing the daily work and I'm doing, you know, so we're both in tune with what's happening and we can no longer pass these emails back and forth. And um, and I just don't want emails going, you know, not that I don't trust the person. It's, I just feel I need to have a handle on everything, all the correspondence that's coming through. Yeah, it would seem, it would seem to me that you could accomplish that through two separate users and having a forwarding feature um, but why did it work between, three months ago? Between each other. Well, I'm not, <coughs> just, it's, it's, so I can send emails to myself, mm -hmm. but I think it's cleaner if the two people using that address or, or whatever have their own accounts. But if you want to share the communications coming into those, to the treasurer position, the bookkeeper position or whatever, 
then you can have them forward to each other so that it's you know anything that comes through to the bookkeeper gets shared automatically with the treasurer and i don't know the the total impact of that but you know i know that we we do some things like that where we have some some emails that are that are uh, people can send to. You don't have to monitor them because they get sent to a primary email. Right. So uh, the short answer is that we, as part of a mailbox or a mail migration, will work with you to figure out what your workflow is and how we can best configure the new mail system to, to work with that. Okay. Right. So it may be that you, but. We, we tend to discourage shared, shared mailboxes because there's a lack of accountability there, right? right. The, the, the accountability and transparency isn't as good. Um, not to say that there aren't use cases where it really that's the thing that makes sense. And so, you know, I, in, in this moment, I don't have a recommendation, but I can tell you that we should be able to figure it out. So, Ruben, what I would say is, and we should probably have a motion and vote so it's in the the minutes that we've decided to do this, assuming we've decided tonight, but assuming that's the case, and we'll find out in a minute, um, I think we need to conclude our email discussion tonight and talk about some of these other issues because we're quickly going to be uh, going to be out of time here. But I think you're you're getting a sense of what the concerns have been. We know what your concerns are, and uh, yeah, if you could get back to us, yeah, well, I mean, we're we're trying to finalize our budget when, Sarah. No, by the end of January. Yeah, basically the end of January. The middle of January. Okay. Middle of January. I, middle of January. I would, January. Think okay. the, I would think in the next two to three weeks we should absolutely. Okay. Well, well, just like everybody else, sooner is sooner is better, right? Of course. But even even if it's a rough number, and you have to say this this is a rough number for budgeting purposes, but it may be more or less, you know, whatever, just to give us something to work with. So much like I did with the server, right? Like. I can give you a terrible number that we will not exceed. Yeah. <laughs> but give us a and realistic then, wait, number. Don't make, it, don't make it look worse than it is, please. In case, you, you'll do better than that. Yeah. Um, okay. I, you know, we can actually build the project and, uh, you know, we're a little backed up on doing that fine of a quote. And it's likely to change because the pricing for the you know, the migration tool and all of that might change in six months yeah. uh, before we're ready to actually do the migration. Okay. So, so, so is someone so willing to be a little, uh, make that function? I just have one quick question. What do yep. the other towns use? I know you work with a lot of other municipalities. Do they go with 365? They're mostly moving to 365. Yeah. We're, frankly, I would say maybe a slim majority to maybe a little bit more of our clients are moving pretty steadily to Office 365. Um, it's, you know, the, the tools, the collaboration tools, Teams and SharePoint and the files, and, you know, all of those things, sorry. I just, I'm just cognizant of our, uh, of our time room, okay. so. Sorry. Uh, is someone willing Possibly. to make that motion? <laughs> Board members? I'm not sure you need a motion to switch email programs. I'm sorry, what? I don't think you need a motion to switch email programs. I don't know. We voted on everything is, else. Should we wait and see what it, the pricing really comes back at? I mean, we well, have the vote is the, the vote is to get a recommendation, to get a proposal. Well, I don't know. Maybe we don't need to vote. Get us a proposal. We can get you yeah. a proposal. I'm fine with that. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. And then, then we can formally approve it when we have the proposal in front of us. Okay. Yeah. So we now have what we believe to be a good server number. Is that well, true? 18 to 20 is what Ruben had sent me in the email. Yeah. Um, and that includes, I'm assuming, installing and everything? Or is That's that the entire project. The entire device. project. Yeah. Okay. And that is a budgetary number, uh, meaning that's a number that I am confident that this project will come in under. Yep. So that is heavily contingent on pricing and availability of the server parts and hardware. That supply line is a train wreck. So uh, an example, we had a particular part inside of a server that's normally like you know, 400 bucks. And they went, oh, sorry, we're out of those right now, but we can get you this one that's $4,000. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Right. So yeah. obviously we still know. Welcome, to the, new, welcome right. to the new world. <laughs> so but this, it did this, turn into like a half a day of chasing down an alternate part number so that we weren't $3,500 high on the server quote. So I know we need to do this as soon as possible. This budget we're talking about is effective next July 1st. Mm -hmm. I believe you said the earliest you could do it anyway was sometime this spring. Is the that... earliest we're going to be able to do it is probably early in summer. Um, yeah. And so, this has to be done, if my recollection is right, you're running a server 2012, which is going end of support in October. Um, yeah. So I think the server is aging. I think you've got uh, an operating system that's going out of support in the fall. So there's a pretty direct window and we don't want to go too far. Um, oh, because, you know, uh, in, in our last meeting, it was like, you know, we're talking about maybe six weeks of difference between when we can get to it and when the budget would accommodate. Uh, we can be, so we can be comfortable putting it in next year's budget. We don't have to try and find the money in this year's budget. That's so, important. so I guess the one question that I would have revolving around that is lead time on components and you know, if we need to authorize a, uh, a purchase of components or an order now, what, are the, what is the impact to the town? Is it, is it, you know, we pay for it when, when the project's complete and we can get stuff ordered now given lead times till then, or how, how does that work? We will invoice for it at a time closer to when we're ready to actually order the gear so that when we invoice you and you pay it, we can turn it into an order quickly. And what we often have done lately, because the supply line is such a mess, is presuming that you know we, we operate on a little bit of a leap of faith. But you know, we talk to you guys. You guys say, yeah, this is in line with what we've talked about, and we'll actually order the gear so that it doesn't disappear before you know we send you the invoice and you're able to approve the, the cutting the check or whatever. Um, we we don't have terms with our suppliers. So the moment that we order it, we pay for it. Um, so there's a little bit of a tension there. But, um, but we have found that holding too firm of a line has turned into a, a procurement nightmare that we end up spending just inordinate amounts of time on. And so that sort of perceived risk of just like ordering it before we have the check in hand from the client um, has been something that we've done uh, several times lately, uh, just to avoid having poor Brittany chasing parts down for three days. Yeah, it just turns so a mess. basically, <laughs> we've got to be ready to pay when we yeah. <clears throat> when we pull the trigger. But but you will have approved the project quote at that point. Yep. Yeah. Right. So yeah. we'll have you know given you a formal quote for a server upgrade project. Yep. Um, and then we invoice for the parts once we get the approval. Of the and in terms of in terms of how that would go, um, is that an over the weekend type of project? Is it a um, are we going to be down for a few days? Or are we going to be? Quick? We usually it's we usually set the expectation that you're going to be down for a day and that it should be during a work day, um, which understanding that it's a pain from a town perspective doesn't mean that you're down down for that entire day, but what that does mean is that the people that are here that need things to work are able to test once we've actually moved everything across and remapped the drives and done all of the stuff that needs to be done. So if we do it on a weekend, there's not somebody here to test to make sure that, you yep. know, for example, all of the modules of memory yep. are working again. So well, it's really should, helpful and it's cost effective. As long as we know in advance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and we always, schedule and coordinate to make sure that it's a day that you know folks are here and maybe it's you know your low traffic day to yep. the degree possible yep. uh, but so that we can test and it also means that we're not running the, the clock at time and a half or double time yeah um, so yep. from a cost perspective for you so it, it's also in, in terms of our in terms of our network our other equipment um, what else have we got that we're looking at going ahead um, let's see. There's not a whole lot else that we put in our multi-year plan. Um, you know, the, the one thing that we 
that we recognized when we met, um, whatever that was, was it three weeks ago, a month ago? Yeah. Oh, Time goes by fast. Probably October. <laughs> a month and a half ago or something. Anyway, <laughs> um, is that we had not done a very good job of um, sort of syncing up once a year. Yep. Um, and so one of the things that, that we did internally is historically at contract renewal time, we send emails out and we say, hey, we'd like to meet and do a contract renewal and just like refresh, tell you where you're at, check in. Um, and we are, we're not finding great success with getting um, responses to those emails. People are busy and we get it. Um, and, and our internal process was that we would set that meeting up and then we would build this executive summary of sort of, you know, here's your new current state, here's your new desired state, and here's the things that we would recommend that we do moving forward. Um, so recognizing that we were not getting a great response rate to those, to those meeting setups, at renewal time, we are just building the executive summary and we'll send it to you every year. And my suspicion, and this has been proving to be true, is that even if you don't respond to our email to, hey, it's renewal time, we'd like to just check in, um, there's usually enough questions about what's in the executive summary that it prompts an email back going, hey, we'd like to talk about that executive summary that you just sent over. Um, now, refresh my memory. Our contract is July 1st, June 1st? I don't have that in April, front of me. I don't recall. Like, I think oh, it's, it's April? I think it's April. some reason, I think it's April, but I think I think it's April. But the I'll have to look and see when the agreement ends now because I think you only we, approved we the agreement in October. Yeah. We did just right. sign it, but was that retroactive back or is it? No, it, it would have started so for the new year. Yeah, because we so, had that conversation. So you know what? That's yeah. that's the good news because my point was going to be this is the time of the year we really focus on that stuff. Yeah. We're thinking about it. We're going through our planning process, so that lines up perfectly with. Uh, and you know, I, I will reiterate the offer that I made in that meeting, which is that I, I am happy to sit down with the select board and go over what's in the executive summary. Yep. And you know, if you have questions well, as, about as what nice, that multi-year plan is, as nice as, like, it, it, as it is to have you and look you in the eye, <laughs> we now have the technology right. to. Uh, well, sit you down. It can either be physical meeting, or so. virtual, but what is it? Way. What is it, Henrietta? What's her no, name? No, Olivia. Olivia. <laughs> Olivia is on the job here. Olivia. 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 I have two quick yeah. questions. What is the estimated life expectancy of a new server? Um, we tell you to budget for four years. Four years. Four years. It's not uncommon to run it for five, and that okay. is highly dependent on how. The machine has performed over the course of the last four years. Okay. Um, there was, yours is starting to show some signs of age. I think we had a yeah. piece that failed. Uh, it's it's shown a couple of issues over the summer that that sh it's. Yeah. So there you go. There was conversation about um, potentially after this next server replacement. By the time we get there, to be moving to a completely cloud-based system entirely possible and we are completely supportive of that. The driving force for you guys, there's two. Um, one is multi-user QuickBook in the building and the other is um, the NIMRIC applications being in the building. So as long as you have something in the building that requires a database backend, you're going to have to have a physical server here. And if you're going to have to have a physical server, then you might as well keep the Active Directory and stuff here, um, because otherwise you're sort of stapling the two together. Sort of pivoting off of the email conversation, one of the things that you don't have right now that you will have once you move to Office 365 is synchronization between the user accounts on the server and up to the Office 365 world, which means that you have one place to disable or enable or provision an account. So if you have somebody who leaves the organization, you go into Active Directory, you disable them, and they're disabled here, they can't log into the workstations, and they can't log into Office 365 anymore. And it's one place and you're done. So that single sign-on is, from, from a management and security perspective, is really important. Um, as time goes on, it, it, presuming that you, know, those, you move to Numeric in the cloud, 
and you move to QuickBooks Online, for example. Um, then you QuickBooks, so. oh, for, okay. So presuming that those those drivers for infrastructure in the building get removed, then you could move to an entirely Office 365 world. All of your files, all of your collaboration, all of that stuff is in the Office 365 world. And then what you do is you back your Office 365 instance up um, out of the cloud, either to here or to our portal or, or whatever. So the other thing that enters into this is almost certainly by then, four years from next summer, we'll have a nice streaming, screaming fast fiber Yep. Yeah. Line right outside our yep. door here. So that ought to make that cloud situation even better, I would think. Right, because you'll have, I mean, honestly, your internet is relatively reliable. I mean, it, it goes out every once in a while. I see, you know, every couple of weeks the agent status goes out and, you know, cable modem needed to be prodded well, or whatever. We're looking, but we in Middlesex are looking five, forward to the fiber world, believe yes. me. Right. I know. <coughs> Physically, right here, it's not so bad. But, right. Uh, but you should look where like I all of the other real, <laughs> <laughs> res, or, uh, yeah, rural areas, the internet is pretty atrocious. And so, so other questions, way, board members? Dorinda? Um, the Sarah? Other that, one I have is we have a new s computer sitting on the floor there that was for downstairs, wasn't it, for the your uh, computer? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's worth having it installed or should we wait until, you know, the system check. I don't know how bad that one is, how often you use it, or... I use the lot, it's really slow. It's gotten it's bad, it's almost slow. impossible to use. You have a depreciating asset, why Why wouldn't we just put it okay. in? Yeah, let's hook it up. Okay, then let's go for that. Yeah. All right. yeah. It know, yeah, it's not doing, it's not doing any no, good. No, it's not doing any good sitting there. So I just want to ask, so we'll put in a and, or service order for that. And you know, to like sort of back up to our basic function, if it's slowing you down, you're way more expensive than a computer. I don't know. Right? I see my so right here. <laughs> <laughs> but, but from a from a basic, you know, technological what what is a computer system but a tool, like if the tools are slowing the people behind the tools down, then then we need to be looking at that. Yeah, I do have one last quick question for you. So we are right in the starting process of looking at a potentially substantial renovation to this building. So if there's anything we should be thinking about from a computer point of view as we do that, it would be good to know. I mean, if we're going to a cloud-based system, I don't think there's much we need to do except to have plenty of outlets and <laughs> places for access points. Yeah. Right. They should Site all blue wired through wherever you're going to have offices or something. Yeah. 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 Okay. But now we drill holes through the floor and run extensions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's effective. It works. <laughs> Okay. Well, Ruben, thank you very much. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's good you to all. see you. I'm giving your family a good holiday. Like, uh, keep your yeah, keep your know. father under control. He he runs around Middlesex quite a bit. <laughs> I hear <laughs> only the periphery um, of the things that he's up to. That all sounds awesome. Well, um, he's he's he and his cohorts have brought new life to our village, and we uh, yeah. and we appreciate it very much. I, I you know speaking as uh, not from Middlesex or, you know, the stuff up at Camp Mead has brought us into town a whole bunch of times. Right. So, you know, that, yeah. There's that and new wine store. Yeah, wine now store we have a wine store. <laughs> I haven't gotten in a view. I haven't yeah. gotten in. Yeah, yeah. I, I, went in, nice I went in and I, I, have, uh, I have a very favorite wine in the whole world, which is a Sancerre, and they, they had it. Nice. And he was like, oh, yeah, no, we definitely hear <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> totally knew what he was talking about, knew his stuff. Well, it almost, it almost sounds like economic development, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> almost. almost. I think Middle that is economic little, development. In the little, little town of Middlesex, yeah. oh, it definitely is economic development. It's, yeah. No, it was, it's fantastic. It's a great little store. Great. Not so little, actually. No, I didn't mean to. Yeah, no, no, no. But I'm just, I'm just saying for a for a wine and beer store, probably. it's a pretty good size. It'll probably bring people in from out of town who like wine. Well, especially 
all those fancy folks going down to the valley, they'll be stopping. And it's yes. going to stop fancy those folks. folks. It's another yeah. reason to stop on your way. There you go. Yeah. It's too bad we lost Nutty Steph, though. I miss Nutty Steph. <laughs> Here. You can go downtown. Okay. 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 Let's go. Thank you, Ruben. Bye, Thank you, Robin. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a great night and a good yeah, happy holiday. holiday. Thank you. There you go. Have yes. some more cookies before you go. I cannot because I will ruin my dinner. How about your? How about any little people in your house? Would they like a few cookies? They um, might. Um, my poor little person is home with a fever right now. Oh. Jeez. Uh oh. She was getting all hungry today. So. But thank you. You can find your way out, all right. I think I you don't need to get down the stairs, down right. through the hall. Should be able, <laughs> should be able to. <laughs> thank you, Ruben. Thank you. All. Have a good thank you. Okay, Capital Planning Committee to outline progress in capital improvement planning and discussions of budgeting for these big ticket items. Action possible, Randy. That we had Elias and Mark. Yep, and we have Elias and, and Mark on the owl. Good evening, gentlemen. Is it is it you, Randy, or is it? I think I think Mark was gonna take lead. Oh, okay. Aww. Mark, I can't hear you very well. Maybe I can turn it up. There's a uh, Right there. Just the TV or yeah. something. Hold on. Let's see. I think he's coming out of the TV. Not the <laughs> well, he shouldn't be coming out of the TV. Oh, look at Elias's new baby. Oh. oh. Is it Evelyn? Is that her name? Hi, Evelyn. Elias, say something. Yeah, this is Evelyn. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, now, Mark, you say something. Test Yeah, it's all okay, cut. It's coming out of the sound bar. Yeah, okay. Are we good? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. All right, I'll, I'll just make a few uh, opening comments to start the conversation. The, okay. um, the intent here is to consolidate and formalize capital asset replacement funding so it's easier to manage, report on, talk about, et cetera. And, and we can have a discussion about how that would look in the budget. Um, and Dorinda has kindly put together a, uh, I would say a draft of a budget that would, would show a capital funding section in it. Secondly, um, you know, we have some, some big expenses coming, primarily in fire and public works. Of course, that's excluding what's gonna happen with the town hall, which will likely be a bond issue. Um, so for fire outside of one replacement, that's the rescue vehicle, we do have a runway for funding some of those replacement costs as basically uh, some of them don't happen until late in the decade or early, uh, actually early in the thirties. So, but on the public work side, we don't have any really any runway. We've got from the asset replacement summary page, you can see virtually every year from 2024 through 2030, we have something that's scheduled for replacement. So if we begin to at least put some money into funding for these, We'll have at least some flexibility on how we want to how we want to pay for them, how we want to finance them. Some of these items, particularly in public works, some of them are of a of a size that we might be able to pay for it, depending on the interest rate environment versus versus um, financing it. Now, in terms of financing this asset inventory is put together with an assumption of a 3% interest rate. And in, uh, in some conversations with Dorinda, I've updated that to 5%. So the numbers on this sheet represent a 5% rate. Again, we don't know what's going to happen. It looks like interest rates, at least in the, north, in the near term, are going to continue to rise. Um, how soon they'll drop is anybody's guess. 
The other point is that the, the costs in this spreadsheet have not been updated for inflation because we don't we don't know what those figures would be. Uh, so I just wanted to let folks know, provide that context before we have our discussion. Can I just ask a question? Um, this is what you just handed us, Dorinda, which is the budget with on the last page, this sort of a CIP section. Yeah. So, what yes. I, so what I did was I removed the funds that would normally fund, like the bridge fund, yeah. the pavement fund, took them out of the operating budget and, and put, put them into this okay. section called capital planning. So that's where all of our savings are going, and then our budget numbers will reflect actual op yes. annual operations. Okay. And in this scenario, too, there's a couple of places where we've never budgeted right. capital planning, but their recommendations. Their recommendations we are okay. we should add these I like how items, this looks. and then they might fund those or whatever okay. in the future. Just one other point I wanted to make, and that's about about debt service, because generally the majority of capital asset replacement ends up in debt service. You know, we know this. Generally it's trucks, heavy equipment, et cetera, financed over any number of years, or even, even uh, you know, a 30, 40 year bond ends up in debt service. So just looking ahead um, over the next three to five years, our debt service is going to increase and potentially significantly if, if the replacement schedules that we have that were defined are actually realistic. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Right now, I think uh, Dorinda can correct me. I think we're, right now our debt service is around $183,000. Um, it'll go down a bit. Um, I think Dorinda is is considering paying off one of the is one year left on one of the loans, but again, uh, we're going to start to add to that year by year, and so that's going to continue to grow. So, again, I don't know that we any of us have an idea on how much debt service we're willing to carry because, like the federal government and interest on the debt, right? Debt service you got to pay it. You know, it's not something you can take out of a budget and it, it'll it eat into other things that we want to do. Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, when we were looking at this currently, um, that reflected like what? It was it was just under 10% of the, of the annual budget and based on what we looked at for the next few years, it might creep to between 15 and 20% of the overall budget. Yeah, that's that's accurate, probably more more toward 15, because it depends on how much the budget increases over the years and, again, what that debt service is. But right now, I think we're about we're about 10 percent, and I think, uh, you know, that's going to go up. Yeah. So I think one of the other things that I'd just like to point out for, for the rest of the board is um, through our discussions, you know, I, I think you know, obviously there's there's huge investment coming. And one of the conversations that we had were, we can make an impact on these shorter term um, notes that we might be pulling against vehicles and things like that. And, and maybe not so necessarily uh, making a, a huge dent in trying to um, look at some of the long-term bonds for like buildings and things like that. Um, where we're really gonna make a difference in, in what kind of payments we have on an annual basis out there. So we've tried to focus on you know, those seven year notes for equipment and, and, and things like that instead of the long term 30 year building notes and, and whatnot. So things that we can, we can provide a little bit more impact on. So I just wanted to point that out as well. So can I just clarify, um, so, in your, some of you, what you're suggesting is that some of these things that we have historically um, gotten a, a loan for, like a vehicle purchase, for example, um, that we are, like for example, highway, heavy equipment and, 
and vehicle upgrade purchases. $30,000 would be what you're putting into a fund. Um, and then presumably next year. So that in two years we'll have 60,000. And we would use all of that and get no loan at all for our trucks or? The, I mean, over time, eventually as we build it up, there'll be more funds in there to, to be able to pick and choose from. Um, but, but we recognize that, especially trying to start this process, mm -hmm. we're not gonna be in that position for quite some time right. without major impact to the voters. Um, so the thought here is that as we, as we begin the process and we start funding these, these line items, the effort is really to uh, take off some of the peak and valleys and the impact that we have. And it's essentially used as a down payment for some of those. And, and we're, not fully, uh, you know, we're not fully funding it through this effort and we're not you know, borrowing 100% of the cost of the vehicle right. either. So, um, over time, it, maybe it gets better, and if we're able to get a year uh, extra out of a piece of equipment because it's held up and we keep funding, then, then eventually it, you know, it builds up and, and we have more flexibility at, at a later point in time. So. Yeah. So I would, I would just say, and you, you've all heard me say this over the years, is that I have been historically against the idea of pre-funding capital purchases because it's like charging the taxpayers for something that they might never get to use or never get to benefit from. They're paying for it, but they never get to see it. Whereas if you borrow the money, if you borrow the money as that notice paid off, the taxpayers are seeing the benefit of that new truck or that grader or, or whatever it is. However, all that said, the idea of being able to make a more substantial down payment reduce the debt service and create a balance between the two things, I think makes sense. It would be a long time and a lot of taxpayer pain to build up a fund to fund all of this or even the, a significant portion of it. So I think it's a good objective. I like the idea of the planning part is really important, obviously, and trying to level out the impact uh, by having some extra funds and paying no attention to when and how we do these things makes all sense in the world. Yeah, Dorinda. The Paven Fund's a great example. We have been funding that for years, and we didn't have, we covered entirely the Center Road project, and we're going to have enough money to cover the Shady Road project. Right. And, you know, it's, um, and without having to make this great impact to the voters at the time we were doing the project. Yep. So there's something to be said about well, no, but, no I agree. I mean, the paving fund is the one big exception. We've always, we've always funded that paving fund, and we also put a little money in the bridge fund. You know, right, so it's not like saying. it's not like we're not doing some of that. But unlike unlike some towns where they, you know, save up money to buy the new truck or the new fire truck or whatever it is, we have not done that. Nor do I see us doing. Yes, sir. I have a, a question about funding. So as you guys know. Um, we have we have a paving fund. We have a bridge fund. What other funds do we have that have been approved by the voters? The town hall building fund. Yeah. Well, was that and that, that was and that was an actual created fund. Yeah, we did that last year. Yeah. Right. You have restoration funds, which is funded but, from something Whenever else. you create a new fund, it's got to go before the voters at town meeting. They got to say we're on board with this. Do right. Yeah. They, yeah. They, the budget. So I guess my next question. Is, great. I figured you were. I just want to get this all. So I guess my next question is, do you guys need another to put another fund on the, on the warning for 2020, March 2023? Do you need a, uh, an equipment fund? Do we have an equipment fund? Well, so that's, what that's, that's the question. Yeah, you know, this is what this part discussion of, is. It's part of the question for the select board, and, and how, do we, how do we set this up? And, and really, it's a, it's a capital improvement fund, right, where you've got different Right. the different departments within that that have I'm, I'm money just... allocated through the process. And, and I think the answer to your question is, is yes. How do we frame that, I think, is to be determined. Um, I just want, first of all, I, we, if you're, if you're going to go forward with this, you realize you have to put a question on the, on the town and say, we are going to create a capital improvement fund if you don't have one. You might say, oh, we have a bunch of little funds. We don't need to do this. Mm -hmm. But it sounds to me as though you guys are now moving around so that you might want to have a capital improvement fund. 
And if so, do I need to, I just want to get the wording right for the warning. You know, that's something you're going to be voting on in four, in four weeks. So I want, I want, that's what I'm. But hold on, a capital improvement fund sounds like one thing, but it, on here you have four new funds. You have structures, grounds, you've got vehicle purchases, you have heavy equipment, you have opportunity fund. Um, that's a lot to put on a warning. And that's four different funds. Is there such a thing as having something like the capital improvement fund with sub accounts that we only have to put on one? My, so, yeah, my suggestion to the to the budget committee was we had one, and all those lines you're seeing underneath would be managed internally okay. and not in separate funds. Yeah. It would be and that's possible. So when you're making when you're doing the presentation to the voters. This is your, what you're asking for, for the capital improvement. Of that, you're gonna allocate 30,000 to the paving fund, you're gonna allocate mm -hmm. you know, 20,000 to the bridge fund, 20,000, but it's one fund. I like that. And yeah. then it would yeah. get separated. We have to keep the accounting of it. And not that, not that it's our intent to do this, but that also gives us flexibility. If we need to take some extra money to do something because the money's all in that one. So the, the okay. budget, yeah, so the budget committee has had, we've gone back and forth on this conversation and are they individual? Is it a group, you know, that, that has a subset line item for departments underneath them? And some of the conversations that we've had is, you know, uh, this would, I would imagine that this would re require setting up some sort of a, uh, a process and how this is is viewed and if departments are are pushing forth you know um, requests through the the capital improvement plan and and being scored on on these efforts and that's how these things are being funded we'd like to make sure that if the highway department is being super diligent about about um, you know keeping things maintained and and going the extra mile to to um, hold on to a piece of equipment and, and, and gain some useful life out of it, that, that, that those funds aren't necessarily just a free-for-all to grab and, right. and put anywhere else. That, that it remains their within, benefit. within right. their department because they're the ones making the effort to, to try to hold on to the equipment, maintain it better, um, you know, and, and what forth. So I think there's a lot to be discussed in, in the back and forth and how that works, but I think those are some of the conversations that, that the budget committee and, and Dorinda has been attending all of our meeting. We've been having, is, uh, you know, understanding what we're responsible to put forth before the voters to Sarah's point was a, was a concern for us and how we present that. Um, well, actually my major concern is just whether or not you need a word, you need a paragraph of the town of warning for the, of a warning that it sounds like we are do. going to create a capital fund, a capital improvement fund, or a capital planning fund. Yeah, and that's, so I just want to talk to the lawyer about it, make sure I get the wording right. You know, I I think that was the consensus that the budget committee came to. Would that would be our recommendation? That is to establish one capital improvement um, fund that has the subset from the different line items here underneath mm -hmm. it. Can I just ask? Is heavy equipment a vehicle upgrade? That refers to all of our like plows and everything, not just like a greater excavator, excavator. the whole nine yards, the trucks, the bucket things. motor trucks, yeah, the <laughs> trucks, all of it. Yeah, I'm just wondering, like I, I go back to what Peter said about, um, you know, sort of we're always, we're always getting a new truck, right? So it just, it becomes, I mean, is it six of one half dozen of another, right? Whether or not, like I can see saving for something like an excavator and a grader, which are these 10 year equipments, or right? More. Or no. more. But like our regular plow trucks that we're every five years replacing or however we're replacing them. Um, and I, and I, and, and I, you know, agree with all these other funds. I think these other ones are, are, um, I don't know what, oh yeah, that's vehicle for the fire truck. That also includes fire department, like fire trucks, right? For a vehicle, right? Um, so, and those are also sort of few and far between, right? We're not replacing fire trucks every five years, right? So I'm just wondering if the heavy equipment and vehicle upgrades purchases we might want to consider using for the bigger ticket items as opposed to, and then continuing to bond for our regular plow trucks and our pickup trucks. Bond. bond, yeah, borrow, yeah, sorry, Finance. borrow. 
and, and finance. And we may we may be in that boat, and we're not we're not married to one or the other, with the way that we've presented this as a as, as it's grouped together. And I believe, I guess, Mark, go ahead. You've got your hand up. So just an answer to Liz's question. It's it's really about having the funds to have flexibility in what we do with them. Right? There might be instances in which, as, as you described, we simply keep the money until a big ticket item like a grader comes up and we try to put as much money against it as possible. It also depends on the interest rate environment at the time. Right? If we've got a high interest rate, we're going to buy a pickup truck with a plow for 50 grand and we have the money, we might decide to put a big down payment on it or buy it outright. But again, that will depend on how much money we have in the fund will drive just how many options we're gonna have. It does, it's nice because it does give us options, I think, you know, as opposed to what we do now, which is, well, we, we're at the mercy of the interest rate and we have to borrow to get it, right? Whereas we might be able to say, oh, we can put half the money down. I'm sorry. The other point I want to make is that, you know, we do get a discount with most of the stuff because we get trade in value. So we sort of have a we sort of have a down payment on some of this, some of this stuff because we do get trade in. So it's not like we're, we're paying full boat all the time. But again, you know, the more money we put in the fund, you know, for example, um, the fire engines, we got three coming due in the early to mid 30s. Right. Who knows? Might be able to pay for half of one if the interest rate. You know, if the interest rate environment is such that it makes sense for us to do that or even pay for a whole one. Because, as I said, outside of the rescue vehicle that needs to be replaced, there's not a fire engine replacement until 2032, I think. And so with this would be a separate out of the budget vote, right? No, it would be presented no, with part of the budget. budget. It would be presented as part of the budget, but as a line item that we're creating this. Yeah, it's just like a whole nother, it's almost like a whole nother department's budget here. Just like, you know, how we isolate out the recreation budget. You yeah. know, the CIP is its own section of the budget. So as we're, as we're putting to doing the work and putting the budget together, just like everybody else comes to us and says, Okay, I've got the planning commission's request here for 4450. The budget committee would essentially be coming to the select board with a funding proposal for the CIP. I guess my worry is that at how what is the difference between getting rid of these things in here and adding some stuff up? What is the what is the percentage of the whole budget? Like is this going to put us at a 15% increase? And would we want to keep it out of the budget as a separate line item for the first year? And then it becomes a part of the budget moving forward. Or not. That doesn't make And vote, it, vote on it as a special article. I'm not sure. First you have to create, you have to say, are we going to create a, a capital improvement fund? Right. Well, you we're going to create the fund before we're going to fund it. Right. Right. Capital improvement fund already exists. But you don't, you can't, you can't put uh, heavy equipment in. They, they have a highway fund, they have a, well, they, they don't, they have a paving fund. You have a paving but fund. under the capital improvement, that's where the highway, the paving fund will exist. Yeah, right. I, I guess that, I'm just saying that, so well, uh, right now you have, you a, you that, have a fund so. for, <laughs> that's what I mean, if you took the town. You have a town hall fund, you have a bridge fund, you, you, you have a paving fund, you have a town garage fund, you have a it's recreation fund. Right. So if you need something like a... You need a heavy equipment fund, which is what Liz is talking about. Board that board fund board. right now doesn't exist. Right. Right. So you would either have to create that, or else you would have to say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to have to create a capital improvement fund, and we're going to have subsections with this, and then we're going to eliminate all those other funds. Right. That would have to be. I'm just thinking of the article wording. I'm just really just thinking as a town clerk, what is the wording going to be on that? Right. And right. then once that is designated, then you can then you can move money, and then you can you know budget it. Right. Like so the conservation fund, that's another fund we have. Right. All right. But they so asked for that as a separate article. That's not capital. That isn't included in the capital planning budget. Right. I'm just saying, I'm no, just thinking it's of all the funds. Fund, right? though. It's another fund, but that's it's kept within which yeah, yeah. it doesn't no, have to be. But so I, so just, to, just to back up a little bit for a minute, and 
believe me, I appreciate all the work and thought you guys have put into this. But I keep looking at the scary bottom line and just wondering, wondering what our appetite is as a town for budget increases. I mean, all this work is not going to be worth anything if we can't get a budget passed. So, you know, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this number before, before special articles of 37.73%. Right, but that also has $198,000 still sitting in it for the highway department. No, 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 no I understand but, exactly what it is, but right. I'm just saying all of this comes down to how big of a tax, I mean, what's the minimum amount of tax increase we can get by with, and what's the right amount to ask for, and what's the tolerance of the voters going to be? And I don't know the answers to those questions, but I can tell you, I don't think it's 37%. Well, can I? So, oh, good, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. So, in answer to Liz's question about, you know, the 60,000 increased funding, that would be, what, 4% of the current, of this year's budget. So, it is, it's, it's a piece there. Um, in terms of what we're looking at for budget increases, as Dorinda said, if you if you pulled out the 188,000 for paving, and let's just say we decided between mud season mitigation and gravel and left one of them in, you're down to about 15% for an increase over over this year. Now, I think where we're going to end up is somewhere between 10 and 15%. There's not a lot of fat in this budget. I mean, I have looked at it, you know, I've asked her into some questions. There's not, it's just not a lot of fat in this budget. So I think where we'll end up is we may not fund 60,000, an additional 60,000 for the CIP, but I think we should fund something. Even if it's only 10,000 or 20,000, at least we start the process of annually funding capital replacement. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Mark. So the other the other point that I want to bring up is, you know, this this is a result of a request of the of the townspeople, right? Um, so we put it, we did our due diligence, we put it put together the inventory, we put this together, um, and if we don't if we don't start this sometime, um, the impact to later budgets is going to be huge. Yeah. So the the effort put forth into, into trying to fund this is to realize that it creates an impact, an increased impact now, so that's gonna offset okay. the dramatic increase later. Right. And I think it, if it's framed and we're, just, we're explaining what we're doing, that we're sort of shifting our, you know, we're, we're planning for, for future expenses as opposed to borrowing at the time we need the money right then and there and borrowing for the full amount that if we're explaining to them that we're we're basically budgeting differently right and that in the first year there's a pain point because you have to you have to fund it to start the the future decreases if that makes any sense so um, right what was the increase for the truck for this year so we just barely bought a truck right what are we looking at? Forty to forty-five thousand dollars worth of principal payments for that for the next five years. That's because we don't have anything to put into it. And if we're able to say to take this and and you know, I think the warranties on the trucks might what, seven years, Vic. Does that, yeah. does that yeah. ring a bell? Yeah, and the, that's only going to go up. And did we finance? Yeah, we finance we for that. the full seven years. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, if we're if we're constantly borrowing 100% for these vehicles at, at who knows what kind of interest rate we're going to be facing, um, you know, that 40% or $40,000 increase just in the principal alone, if you put that into a percentage of the budget, I think what I was trying to express earlier is we're going to be hitting, instead of the 10% of the budget being uh, you know, tied up in the debt service and everything, we're working up into that 15 and 20% range, where right. if we can offset that now, by or offset that later by starting to fund it now, we're facing smaller increases in the future. I agree. Mark? It, 
it's unfortunate that we're kind of in a tough spot, right? We don't have a lot of runway. It would be nicer if we didn't have a big capital replacement until five years from now. But unfortunately, in public works, we're mm -hmm. going to get hit every year for a while. So in the short term, it's more about softening the impact. There's not really a lot we're going to be able to do in the short term in terms of the debt service and impacts to the tax revenue. It just isn't. It's more in the long term how we save and then selectively target those funds that has the best impact on keeping the tax rate as stable as possible. And none of us knows right now what that would be in the long term. But as we move through this process and we're more conscious year to year, we'll learn and figure out where we want to put the money. But if you don't have any money, you don't have any place to put it. Just taking out that hundred and nine, and I'm not picking on the highway department. I just want to, uh -huh. but if we took out that hundred and ninety-eight thousand, which we know was just because you misunderstood, we didn't have any money in the budget already for it. That's why that one got on there. The mud mitigation, so if we took out the 198000 and then took out the mud mitigation, uh, let's see, we're down to, did I take that one out or no? Uh, yes, so I took that out. Taking out those two numbers, we're down to, um, we're down to an overall budget of 19.57%. And we haven't even looked at anything else yet, but that's just right. using two right. numbers. Well, no, I understand. So I don't, it looks horrible because we have some really bad numbers in there right now. And I think that we presented it this way because you wanted to see the budget as it was initially presented. And then, because all the budget committee did was add $60,000 to what had already been requested. Isn't it 75000 I'm a little confused about the sixty. You know, it's, it's just, so the 30000 for vehicles, um, there's 20000 for fire department vehicles, and then 10000 10, in general government. All of the other money well, that's listed funded. here is already funded. The vehicle purchases, I mean, structure and ground upgrades, 5000 And 10000 opportunity fund? It was, so Good. they added 60000 So if you look, at the, at, look at the very bottom, oh, so... Here. No, you need to look, look at, at this. Look at this here. So those numbers that I've circled, Liz, yeah. those are what we've added to that isn't already included in the budget proposal. So okay. everything else is already included in the budget proposals. No, I, I understand that. I'm just looking at what Dorinda has done, and it looks like in past years we've never funded an opportunity fund for ten thousand. No, so that's that ten thousand. That's, that's the ten thousand. Okay, but we've never funded um, he yeah heavy equipment. That's thirty. Right. Um, gravel. Vehicle I didn't take purchase. Gravel. The gravel is still in the, in the in the municipal budget, the town highway department budget. Yeah. Structures and grounds upgrade. This is that recreation, the court five thousand. Well, that was because we were giving, um, we were giving initially to the court. I think we were doing yeah. five hundred or something like that. Or that was a five thousand. That was five thousand. That yeah. was already there then. Oh, and I'm, I see what you're saying that you, we've increased the paving fund at an additional ten thousand this year. No. Back to thirty. I mean, you're yes, back that to was thirty. That was twenty that last was, year. We was, reduced it. Yes, I it's back that. to normal value this year. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, and um, okay. But so I, I still see <laughs> Yeah, but the. But it's because it's you're saying new. Those are fifteen thousand dollars were already in the, yeah. in there. We've just pulled it you, from the main you. budget I and pulled you. it into this subsection. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I personally am in favor of, of that, and I don't think it's, you know, it is sort of, you know, a pain point, but if, if it's explained properly and we're communicating it, why, what this means, I think people will accept it. Yeah, and I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like we're this doing is, what they've asked us to do. And I it's agree in, really. in the best interest. And I honestly need, think this is in the we best We need interest. to present it to them, and, and ultimately it's up for them to decide. But I feel like, 
you know, we put a bunch of work into this, um, and, and quite honestly, we feel like it should be more significant than this, but we recognize that times are difficult right now. And uh, Mark, go ahead. So watching the time here, I know I've got to leave at 6.30, but I, I know we're not going to be able to make a decision on funding tonight because we have to look at the total budget, start to, you know, go through things. But it, at least we can get consensus that we're going to have a CIP funding part of the budget going forward. I think that would be a great first step. Yep. Yeah. I agree, Mark. Thank you. Yeah. I, I do like the presentation that Dorinda put together here and pulling all of the non-operational pieces basically under the under the CIP, so the, the bridge fund and the paving and all that stuff. I like I think it presents itself better and, and when it's put in front of folks they can they can recognize that these are investments that we're making into the future. Yep. Um, it's gonna take some it's gonna take some time and education because I'll tell you you know, the majority of the people who show up at the town meeting and the majority of people who are reading the town report, yeah. they don't understand these numbers, as you well know. Mm -hmm. What they understand is what their tax bill is. Absolutely. So, you know, right. we've just got to be, we've just got to be ready. I think we need to develop a, develop a handout to pass out at town meeting and maybe mail out to all the voters before town meeting. We can think about that, but um, we need to sell this. Yeah, absolutely. So is there a motion that's needed for this, Sarah, that we need to, to because we need, it needs to go on to the ballot? No, special when, you guys, when, you, when you guys pass the warning, when you vote on the warning, and you, you should, I, I, just don't, I just need to know for my own purposes, if there is a, a, an article, not a special article, but an article that needs to be put on the warning saying, we are going to create a capital improvement fund, or are you just going to say something else? We've got to create the fund. The warning, I bet you'll approve that. I just need some direction as what you want to have on the on the warning. And Dorinda, are you saying we absolutely have to do this because the special the, the fund that we have right now? No. So if you if they weren't to add any money to these other new accounts right. or whatever, you wouldn't have to do anything. You would just be realigning the way we lay out the budget presentation instead of having those funds sitting in the operating right. budget, they would be at the bottom as future planning monies. Right. So, but with that being said, then the budget committee in their process felt we should be adding a little bit more, and that's yeah, where yeah, these that's other right. funds were created, or other line items, not, you know, that yeah. within the funds, but you would have to call it something different because if we have, you know, if we're going to put it towards vehicle purchase, we never had that before as uh, a savings, you know, for uh, vehicle purchases. So if you were, you would have to add that as a new item. The idea is that whenever you're holding money that's not right. going to be spent in that fiscal year, you've got there's got to be a reason okay. for that. So the taxpayers have got to be able to say yes. Or the voters have got to be saying, you know, they don't have to worry about the bridge or the paving fund because those funds have already been created. Right. And they just look at the budget and say, okay, this is our contribution. But if you're saying, well, now we're going to be creating, putting money aside that, like Peter says, we're not going to see the benefit of for a few yeah. years, then you have to, you know, the voters have to be on board about creating a fund. What you guys have come up with, which I personally think is brilliant, which is create a capital improvement right. fund, have the subsections, then people right. can see it. It's almost like reverse debt service. You're saying, okay, this, this is what we're going to do. It is. And, uh, but now we're like seeing what we're going to say. Right. And as long as that fund has been approved and created, then you don't have to do that every year. Well, that's right. what I was going to say. If we had an additional like sub fund that we wanted to create, like, oh, we want to do the playground fund. Right. So then you would have to, have to put the same would question. Have to you would. Anytime you would. you're saying to the, anytime the voters are agreeing, okay. like Peter's saying, any, they're saying, we are agree to put this money here. And we may move out in 20 years and we'll never see it, but we think it's a good investment okay. in our community. But so we just already have in. a recreation fund. Yeah, I know. That's so I don't have to do that. One. Elias, there's yeah. not going to be a playground in town, so don't look forward to that. <laughs> no, no, but we already have one. Right. So, right. Right. so, you know, I think we're adding very little to this, to be honest with yeah. you. I think there's just a couple of new sections that we have to... I like, like I like calling it the capital yeah. improvement fund because it ties into this whole process 
to say the creation of this fund is a result of this planning process, long-term planning process you, that you, the voters, act us, asked us to start. We've spent a lot of time and effort and give credit to the people who've actually done the work and say, you know, this is in effect reverse debt service, savings account, whatever you want to call it, but it's looking forward to our future capital needs, which we're going to lay out for them, and making an effort to levelize over time our, or at least mitigate the ups and downs in our in our debt service. And ha, ha, can uh, we though, like, add to this capital fund if we're putting this on a warning? Fire department building fund zero dollars. Like when we're explaining it to the town, so that we don't have to keep putting it on the warning. If we are like, oh, next year we're going to start a fire department building fund. Right. I think. I would keep your categories as general as you can. Like if you just want to allocate fire department and then that you're going to allocate, you know, $20,000 to the fire department, we don't necessarily have to spell out that it's for a fire truck or if it's for breathing apparatus. That can be done under a subcategory. But it is, what we need to explain, it is for capital improvements right. it's not for right. operating money right it's, it's for capital for future future yeah. capital well, needs well and, and essentially it's for anything that goes through the capital improvement process so right. a submission to the budget committee is a necessity i would think for those types of those types of items so it solidifies you know the process as a whole and and it, it kind of enforces the use of the process to get things submitted in an appropriate manner and presented to the budget committee, the planning commission, the select board, and then to the voters, uh, you know, all in a, a very, you know, defined process. So. I'm just gonna need some guidance for how to, do, to phrase that, that article in the morning, that's all. And so I don't miss yep. it. But also, just from a personal point of view, I wanna thank Mark and Elias and Randy, thank you so much. I'm Liz. Dorinda. Dorinda. Yeah. I think this is fantastic. In my, ten, in my 10 years here, I have never heard such a thorough planning of the future expenses. It's really, yeah. really impressive. Oh, it's, great. it's stunning what you guys have done. I'm really grateful as a town employee. Yeah, and I, I will say, you know, from sitting on the budget committee, uh, you know, Mark, You've put in a tremendous amount of effort. Thank you. You've yeah. you, oh, I feel God. like you've carried you've carried the majority yeah. of the burden here, um, right. as far as our process goes, and and just want to recognize your efforts there. So thank you. Elias gets a pass. With you're, the you're welcome. Thank yeah, you. Elias has been uh, <laughs> occupied with uh, new family members. <laughs> Barely present, but I'm here. <laughs> Well, thanks, guys. This, I mean, we've got to we've got to figure out how this fits into the budget. But I think you're hearing a lot of support for putting a significant number in there. It, I agree, Mark. It'd be great if it could be more. But with everything else we're looking at, I think we've got to, you know, keep it under control. But yeah. starting the process and getting the format changed on our our financial reports and our budget requests is going to be uh, going to be a great thing. So I agree. Thank you. Anything else? We haven't heard much from you, Victor. Haven't had a chance yet. <laughs> haven't had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get your chance. Right. Okay. Okay, so moving right along. Continued discussion about FY24 town budget, including office expenses, planning commission, and other expenses, as well as wages <clears throat> in action possible. Um, so we do have, I guess, first of all, we have a revised highway budget or a corrected highway budget, or however we want to put it. Um, and we also have a uh, recreation uh, budget request. And there's a planning commission as well. And there's a planning commission one here somewhere, yeah. No. Oh, it's under here. Oh, here we go. Yeah. There it is. I got it. I got it. Thank you.
There we go. Thank you. Um, so, um, I don't know how we want to proceed tonight. Um, we have Dorinda's. So, Dorinda, this this proposal you gave us with the with the CIP funding breakout in it. What does that have built in for a pay raise? Oh, uh, I think it's just three percent. The three percent that we ever, talked about the last time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, three percent. Um, and are there any other changes from the last time? You just any what? You just moved things around and included the sixty thousand for the. Right. I just everything that you've got in front of you for numbers are in both the the version that I handed out and the version, the original version that was yeah. on the table yeah. before I handed out. The two should be the same. Um, It looks like there's a $45,000 difference or so, roughly, yeah. from what I'm seeing between the two. Wait, well, I might have added it? something after I created it or whatever. It looks like the, the, one, the, the one that doesn't incorporate the CIP is running 1.99. Oh, I think the difference was um, Mark caught a couple of errors. I had not put in... There was two budget numbers. I had not included the what was it? The t upgraded the ten thousand back to thirty thousand, right? Oh, yeah. right. And yeah. then the yeah. other the thirty for payment, yeah. right? The thirty for payment, and then there was one other one. Um, what was that? The rec committee or something that I had left off? <laughs> yeah, the five grand for rec. Right. I think those were the two differences, maybe. Folks, I have to drop, but thanks a lot again Thank for all you, your time. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. Bye. Um, I'll go through there. I mean, it was hard trying to keep track because the papers kept, but definitely I'll go through all this. But we're not talking a huge difference here, I think. Um, this, I would go with orig the original one and then... Yeah, the original one's got a little bit more money in it. So. Yeah, it does have more money in it, so... Um, the original one with the yellow highlights to me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think the date at the top was 1214. Yeah. And yeah. then I'll make then I'll make the corrections from there afterwards. Okay. Okay, so when you said it was a three percent raise? It I had that was just the number that defaults in the computer, so that was Why is the, what am I misunderstanding about the wages and why they're less this year? For this year? Just for the, you're talking just the, the um, select board, the select board the assistant. Office. That's because of the crazy way you guys have it set up that it's 49% and 51%. Mm -hmm. So it's high, I see, yeah, down below it seems to be made up. Right, yeah. Gotcha. It's, uh, The town property maintenance, is that, um, you know, we ran $1,000 before and 175 now, can we shift that somewhere? I think there, that one was just some extra work that was done because the mowing and all gets captured um, under, I think, town property or something. So I think there's, you know, it's all how these bills get coded out and yeah. uh, that's the biggest yeah. issue. No, nope, they don't ever get coded the same. And um, so I'll just throw this out to me and I know we gave big pay increases this past year, but 3% just doesn't feel right or enough to me in light of inflation and cost of living and everything else. So, what is the I'm, insurance premium? We don't know yet what the insurance. Thirteen percent. Yeah, it's going to be thirteen percent more. 
Yeah. yeah. So the town's picked all of that up. Oh, the town has picked. We all pay a hundred percent of their premiums. Yeah. Okay, so they're not going to be affected by an insurance increase. No. And no. we no. also pick counters. up all of their life insurance and that as okay. well. Yeah, but that's minor compared to the medical. Oh yeah, but I and mean, the it's still in percentages of increase. Yeah, I just, I, my personal feelings are, I think we just need to observe that, you know. Those, ta those costs with the town picking those up, it's not an impact to the employee, and that's a huge benefit to them. So I think that should be reflective in, in how we look at their costs. Well, the and I, no, 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 too. I agree. So, and, I, and I think we did, we did discuss at the last meeting that we want, to, we want to do those sheets, which I honestly thought we had done last year, and I guess we did them, but we never distributed them or whatever, <laughs> but um, they need to see that, and they need to, you know, rather than just give them the sheet that they don't understand, I mean, I, I think we need to go That's down and sit down with the road crew and go right through it with them. So they, because I'll tell you, they don't understand what it is. Do other towns pay 100% of insurance? Do we know? I have no Many idea. do, some, some don't. Do, some, some don't. don't. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because I mean, it's, it's... Is that, is it's, that process, uh, you've done some, some of those worksheets before, is it a, is it a you know, an hour long exercise for you to generate those for the select board no, so that so we can I look at what the- No, so I've got the all set up now, so all I have to do is just plug in that way to pay. I think for me, um, personally, as I evaluate what I feel, you know, might be fair to the employees, uh, I would like to see, you know, the overall compensation package and how that's, you know, how that's adjusted for them from this year, from last year, so that I could weigh in appropriately. Um, that's just my, my I mean, frame the hard part. The, the hard part about trying to look at that is, is the, the benefits that they all get is one thing, but the health insurance, you know, some take it, some don't, that makes a huge swing in what their, what their, uh, what their compensation is. Con currently everybody's taking it except for one person. Okay. And are they taking single or family or two person or what are they? Um, we have two two person and three, one, two, two, one, one, two, two singles. And do so we do a buyout for those that don't take care? The one yes. that doesn't, we pay $1,800. And they, but they do show that they have insurance someplace else. Yeah. Okay. Um, the... Yeah, I mean, what is the overall increase, dollar increase of, a, of an extra percent, like a 4%? Because the salaries are not, it's, the salaries are not the hugest part of our budget. We don't have that many employees. The salaries are not what? The hugest part of our budget. Well, what you're saying is that you're, your cost of your health insurance and is going up, and that's that. There, that that's what some of the cost is to the for the employee. Is that correct? Yeah, where I'm going with that is that's an added benefit. So just it's a it's a cost of living that as most people make that adjustment. But are you, our employees aren't impacted by that because the town's picking it up. Picking 100 percent. Yes, but the but the employee looks at it like, I got my insurance fully paid last year, why shouldn't I this year? No, but they are. And they are, they are getting it. Right. Absolutely, but I don't, but think, I, I don't think we can't, uh, personally, and I'll, I'll, I'll speak on my own individual right. yeah, uh, what are you trying opinion, to say? is that that's a value add for those folks. Most, most value most, add mean? Most places, are, are passing you? are passing the cost of the increase for health care on to their employees. I understand what you're We're saying. We're not doing that. So if right. if apples to apples, if I'm sitting here paying um, Vic Wire, you know, twenty dollars an hour right. here and the same exact business over here is paying you twenty dollars an hour, but I'm passing on your your health care to you, but here I'm not, right. the adjustment in pay can make you you know, to the same point is different. Your paycheck's gonna be less. Right. Right, and right. so I think what Randy's saying, which is what I'm in favor of as well, is, and from a state, from a standpoint of being an employee who may be married, for example, I'd wanna compare. I'd wanna say like, well, what would my spouse be paying 
in health insurance versus what I'm getting as a benefit in health insurance. You know, so I'd want to know what is that figure? What is this? What is my value? What am I worth, basically? Right. Um, well, that's the whole point of the sheet. Or what sheet. am I getting out of it? Right, exactly. That's the whole point and of I the think, sheet. So that's what I'm trying to say is that I think it, 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 it makes a more transparent picture for the employee to say, okay, in addition to my $25 an hour, I'm also getting, you know, $20,000 worth of an insurance benefit. Is right, this, absolutely. And I think where Victor's going with this is, right. is you know, um, if I correct me if I'm if right. I'm mistaken, but I think where you're going is they're looking at the end of the day their paycheck and what's going in right. their pocket, and that's what they're concerned about. Right. Yep. Exactly. It's a hard sell to say we paid your insurance last year, but we're going to take fifty bucks more a week out of you because your insurance went up. It's a hard sell for them. I don't care. I mean, you know that. Oh, sure. And I'm not suggesting. I mean, the teachers' union. We're not going to do that. I, I'm not suggesting. Oh, I thought you said that's what you're no, saying. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Just we're just going to point it out to them. We're going to point it out to them. Okay. So I'm here's no, here's no, what no, we're not here's a, and I've out. I have been through this and I've I've told you all that I've been through this 44 years. I did this every year explain, explaining to other employees at Noel Johnson this stuff, and I tried every system in the world of how to do it. I tried doing it the the big picture way, the little picture way. You know, giving them sheets, not giving them sheets, everything. The giving them sheets works. I think that's sheet. And what it, and what it, yeah, all works. I want to say is when they say, oh my God, we're only getting a three, four, or five percent pay increase and the cost of living is eight percent or whatever it is, say, yes, but we're absorbing this much additional cost in your health insurance and that is of direct benefit to you. Right. And if you look at like Randy and me, where we work, our health insurance goes up by 12%, we have to pay for that cost. So our you know, cost of living increase of 3% is really negative 8%, <laughs> right? We're actually get, getting 8% less in our check because our insurance premium went up. In the town of Middlesex, our insurance premiums go up, but our town's employees don't have to pay for that. And that's huge. That is not the norm for most places and that's a sell a selling point to understanding that hey we can't necessarily afford to give you a six percent raise like we did last year and the look at what your work the only us. other thing i would say liz is and i've been through this i can't i mean hundred i've had hundreds probably thousands of conversations on this subject over the years and exactly what victor says is true employees value that health insurance, but they don't value it the way they value money in their paycheck at the end of the week. I they totally say, yeah, understand. that's, that's great, too. that's great, I understand it, but, you know, and, and of course the choice is to say to them then, okay, maybe we can give you a little more money in your paycheck, but you're going to have to participate in the cost of the health insurance, and that's just a, a dollar swapping thing. The, P, the other thing that people do not understand about health insurance is it is one of the few things that you can give an employee which is not taxable to them. Yes. Right. So not only not only is it a benefit, but it's not added into their salary and then taxed. It's a straight up benefit. No taxes come out of that. No social security, no, you know, estimated taxes or whatever. No. So, you know, that that seventy eight hundred dollars is really more like ten thousand dollars in value. Plus, what we tax. pay doesn't get taxed either. Doesn't that get off our taxable income? It's free tax. It's free yeah, it's tax. free tax. Yeah. What's free tax? Like what Health, I'll pay healthcare for premiums income. are free tax. Oh, okay. Yeah. As long as it's a recognized. Yeah. 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 So, but, well, that, that's the only point I'm making. But the the underlying question is, with all that said, so to answer your question, Liz, and I I quickly I quickly added up the salary numbers, and I'm sure I missed a few of the small yeah. ones, but. But basically, it's three thousand dollars for every. For every. Unless I made a mistake, for, for every one percent. For every what? One percent. But maybe don't quote that. He's just looking at. No, no, no. I, I did yeah, it's a quickly. Quick a back of the napkin. Three yeah, it's, it's a three yeah. percent increase for every one percent. Three hundred. Three hundred and seven thousand dollars is roughly what I added up for our. And I'm sure I missed maybe the health officer and a few other little little things but but if you say it's 
If you say it's $310,000. In salaries. Uh, and 1% is. So every time you add 1%, you're adding $3,000 to the budget. Yeah. Right. And then, of course, the workers' comp goes up a little bit, and the unemployment goes up a little bit, so it's probably. Life, life the whole nine years. Every, everything's, everything's tied increased. to labor. Yeah. So right. I don't think you can. You can peel that out without sitting in front of the spreadsheet and plugging the number because everything ties back to labor. Right. So you can't just look at the labor line item. Right. 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 No, you can't. And we have to also um, remember that we are still in a tight job market and that losing someone costs us a lot more than the $3,000. And then the extra percentage well, that we give them. So, so if it's four percent, which is ultimately not very much, it's still a nicer number in the in the. You know, if I got a four percent raise, I'd be kind of psyched. You know, I don't, we don't get that necessarily in a nonprofit, right? Um, and so, that to me is like saying, oh, we value you, or five percent for six thousand dollars, right? And then we know that that person is less likely to leave us for someplace else. Because in the grand scheme of things, 3% is you know not very much money on a $60,000. Well, and on a grand you know, scheme of things, times an three, extra, $1, say that, say that $6,000 for 2% is actually $8,000 by the time you add in all the little miscellaneous stuff. Workers comp for the road crew being the, probably the biggest chunk. Um, but say it's, say it's $8,000. In terms of our budget, that's a relatively small that's number. That's what I mean. I mean, if we if we retained one road crew member for three exactly. years because of that, we would more than make that money back. And I'm not suggesting that's the right I, number. I'm I just don't, trying to. I don't disagree with any of what you guys were saying. I I just feel like for me to step back and look at the overall big picture, that's what I would like to do personally. So if if, if it's too so, much to ask if no, I could get those sheets for folks. So I can give you the sheets that were compared from last year and then plug in the new numbers for this year. Sure. Very great. Yeah. But that doesn't, the sheets that they would have gotten on July 1 does not include what the um, increase was, just so you know from when you guys went through and adjusted everybody's. It, the numbers there, but it, it was there was a huge jump between prior to that. And oh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. There was you know anywhere from a, a ten to twenty percent right. increase across the board yeah. when we made that, and, and, then, and then, then on top sheets. of that, six months later on July first, they received another five percent. So some folks within the town received a twenty five percent increase in salary in six months. Um, so that's what I want to be conscious of. Um, and I don't, I don't disagree with anything you guys were saying, but I, I feel like. For Fringe, me, I, know, I don't think any of us are disagreeing. I think it's a great idea to look at those sheets. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it would be also, I'll, I'll try and make a few phone calls and see if I can find out anything about what's going on in other, other towns. Well, uh -huh. It's been on the list, sir. I'm on the list, sir. Yeah. But it's not already questions. Yeah, I mean, one okay. town says they do 3% no matter what every single year. Another town says they're doing 5%. Another town, they've been talking about 7%. Another town says, but they're all working on their budgets, so they're all right. looking at And we don't same. know, we know some of them gave interim pay raises last year, but did they give the interim pay raises that we gave last year? You know, it is, it, it's, it's not only the percentage, it's what's, what amount are they going to be paying the experienced guys on the road crew. Right. I think, and Eric, I don't know. I don't know if you and your in your world are you hearing? Are the are the drums beating? Are we hearing uh, what's going on out there in the world with regard to this, or is it pretty much? Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Yeah, yep. they're all over the place. They're all over the place. Yeah. So and in terms of and other towns are all over the place. Yep. And if you really want to compare it, compare it to the state of Vermont. Right. But There's no real consistency. There is. But none. we believe, I don't want to be careful how I say this, but we believe that we are now in a competitive position, which means above average in terms of what our guys are making. I do know that a lot of towns have started bumping up their pay scale in the last few years just because of right? they just can't get we, people. Yeah, it's the same, same as our team. You know, Hinesburg, I mean, Richmond, uh, all of them. They had, yeah, to, they they had to revamp everything. Yeah. So uh, you said that this 
what we're looking at tonight reflects three percent. That's what's the number that's set. Yeah, that's three percent. Okay. Dorita, the, the ones that are highlighted in yellow, what's the significance of that? On the budget sheet? Yes. Those are not confirmed numbers. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so let's see what time is it. Let's keep going. So, you know, I think we're in agreement, or at least I think we are, at the very least that we're going to adjust that construction paving amount, if not whack it out entirely, because actually that construction, the paving part of that is, is reflected in the, or will be reflected in the CIP, right? So that's double stated, what's going into well, the so fund? Well, so the paving, fund, fund, right? the paving fund is different from the number that Eric gave for the paving project. Mm -hmm. I think the conversation that, that we should be having is there's money sitting in the paving fund right now, and whether yep. that money is coming out of the paving fund or are you including any portion of it in this year's budget? Correct. Um, so the hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars is a fully I did, yeah, fully I paid for. That it was the other money was in there. Yeah. So, so it's fully paid for within the budget the way it's presented now. So it I think the, it the be conversation there. we need to have is: Are we going to try to pull that hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars fully from the existing paving fund and just continue to? fund the paving fund as we always have at $30,000 for the year. So that'd be a change in this budget as prepared of $198,000 right. less. Mm -hmm. um, or do we feel like it's somewhere in between? My personal feeling is if we had the money in the, in the paving fund planned to pay for a paving project with it's that, used. then with the other increases that we're facing here, I think that we should move forward with that plan and, and utilize the paving fund to pay for this project if it gets us there. That's my personal and opinion. I, and I believe, Dorinda, you think it does get us there, right? The money that we've got in there? Yeah. Yeah, I think Vic and I actually figured that out way back when we were... Because the other, the other issue is we've now, we've now finally done Center Road. We did the uh, lower part going up to the school now we're going to do the upper part you know I'm not suggesting that we don't have any paving coming up in the next 10 years but we don't have any in the next that'll few years no, we'll finish that it'll be small Mount right. Middlesex yeah the only thing we yeah, should do is that, that launch section. ramp yep. the section right at the town line yeah the correct. dispute I call it the dispute well yeah that section from the dirt all the way to there is is horrendous oh because you don't know where the town line is you well, there's a, there are two things. Yeah. There, there's, the, there's the part that we pay, right? Yeah. But then there's the little part by the house by the pond where yeah. my understanding is we say it belongs to Montpelier. They say it belongs to us. The last time around, nobody paid it. Right. I think that belongs to us. So can I just clarify for the minutes? You the want to take the $198,000 out of the paving fund and pay for right the project? No. I just, I but anyway, we need to resolve that. that. So the hundred and ninety eight thousand dollars, Eric presented it as part of the highway department budget. Right. Mm -hmm. So my understanding is that we have money in the paving fund right. to pay that. In enough to pay for that entire project. Right. And that we would take it out of Eric's presented budget to us okay. and pay for the project out of the paving fund. That's what I was saying. And the paving fund in this year's presentation would remain at the $30,000 that we've been putting in it on an annual basis. Yeah. All, all you're doing is taking money out of the paving, but this won't be reflected in the budget. We're just saying it's going to cover the cost that Eric had proposed. Correct. Right. Cut, the, cut the highway budget by that much because you're using that much. Correct, budget. yes, because we already right. have the money. Yes. Right, I know, just clarify. Okay, okay. So I'm going to say at least for th thinking about it, I'm thinking that that 188000 is going away in the budget. 198. Yeah. It's 198, I'm sorry. And then the question is, we get down to mud season mitigation. Yeah. 75, 75,000. Um, you know, at least for starters, I would say we should cut that in half. Well, we've never budgeted for it before. No, so I know. It, so it's new. I mean, it was something that, yeah. And that yeah. was basically because of the big storm, wasn't it? Yeah. A lot of it was because it of that storm. It basically mirrors what we, we spent last year. 
Yeah. We got some money back on it. We got money back on it. I think that can easily be cut. But some of our money, some of that, wasn't that some of that for our, for our springtime thing? I thought yes. that's what that was. And that springtime thing is a, is not a good way, that's a, not an efficient use of gravel. No, you don't want to put gravel, you need to put clean stone. Yeah. You know, well, whatever you, you spend there for, yeah. for aggregate is not an efficient yeah. way to spend, to build your road up. Yeah. No, it's an emergency. You're better off to put it in the summertime even if you have to put in a little bit less, you'll get you'll get by with it, and just keep adding to it every you know, keep adding every year, and uh, it'll take a, take it'll cure your uh, winter. When you're trying to do the breaststroke to get out of the window of your truck and get to the side of the road, it seems like whatever you should dump in that mud is whatever you should so dump. So, are in you the suggesting that should become a CIP item that we start saving for? I, I had suggested that the hundred thousand dollars originally that we put in for the gravel budget out of their operational budget was a CIP, CIP item, but I think at that point it was felt that, that they wanted to keep it in their operational budget. But I don't see away, this as a one year. It goes away at the end of the year. So I don't see don't this as a it. one year expense. So my. My personal feelings are if we include it in that CIP grouping, you can you can allocate the money to it this year, and if we spend 75% of it, you still got 25% sitting there. To your point, if you spend 75 this year and you're in the way it's presented now, it goes it. away. It goes away. Right. So I would rather see it in the in the capital improvement uh, plan because. I don't think one year of, of this level of investment into gravel gets us to where our roads need that, to be. No. That level needs to be there every year. So Peter and, and Select Board, the best way I can explain it to you is when we did McCullough, not because I live on McCullough Hill, it's nothing but when we did McCullough Hill Road, we used to have some really bad, bad, uh, you know, frost heaves and frost springtime. And we fixed that. We ditched that. So we ditched our other roads. We, could, you know, a lot of them are, are uh, East Hill all the way down, and, and that's all been just. But we only put three or four inches of that granite gravel, which is a combination of granite and bank gravel. And I have to be careful what I say here because it comes out of McCullough's pit. I don't want to push. Uh, any one person, but it's it's a, you know, it's, it's at least one. But that lasted for how many years? And, yeah. and now it needs, you know, we, we really should be adding gravel to all our roads right. every year. Yep, right. And not not all of them, but our different sections every year. You have to be adding to them all the time. You you can't. Now that's where we that's where we fell down. Where we got where we got in our. Our our old long highway plan, you know, where we had we do this section of this road this year, and then, you know, right. something could get postponed because we'd have a flood, and you know, we still didn't get done for whatever it was ten years, still not done, That's um, cool. you know, and and then all of a sudden we're in a bad place. East Hill, as you know now, Plus, when it, when you get that freeze thaw cycle, it's like grease like in that give him layer of mud and slop that's on top. We'll fix that for you. I know. Okay. It's time for East Hill. And I'm not saying that just because I live there. <laughs> so in FY22, we spent 29, almost $30,000. We budgeted for this year $40,000. So, okay. Um, I mean, we, we, we need to have the money there, but we also need to make a point to do it. Right. Right. And, right. and that's the difference. Right. Right. You know, right. you get doing this, this, this thing, right. then it makes you know it's, it's well, all over and you can't do it anymore. So that brings us. To the conversation of, of road maintenance versus road construction. Right. Bingo. Uh, so, yeah. you know, uh, anyway, I won't, yeah. I won't go down that well, hole. Just for not saying this is the final number, but what I'm hearing, I think what I'm hearing is take out the 198 and take out the 75. Yep. The mud Are you mitigation? taking out the 75 mud mitigation or cutting it in half? I thought you said cut it in yeah, half. Yeah, you said cut it in half, but... Well, I said cut it in half initially. Now I'm 
I don't, I don't know. What's what's your pleasure? I mean, is is that is that number that uh, that thirty eight thousand or half of it? Yeah, is that going to go into the CIP? So no. I think the hundred thousand dollars for the gravel specific underneath underneath your summer um, maintenance. Summer maintenance. Summer maintenance yeah. you know, I think that's a CIP item. Okay. The mud mitigation, I could go either way on it. Yeah. Um, so just just so we know that that number came from i believe that's what we paid for the stone in the springtime is that correct the, right the seventy six thousand dollar yes right. and that's what i was figuring if we got major problems like we had last spring and we have all this mud that you cannot navigate did you that need include, to put something into it did that include the trucking of the stone i think that's just that's, 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 that's all inclusive yeah. okay yeah I would just like to comment that on a that's think, where that number came from. I think on a capital improvement plan, they in, they discourage you from using roads as a capital. Huh. Yeah, they do. That it's it's buildings and equipment. Okay. So, so they would say it's maintenance. Not so you just keep it in your regular okay. budget okay. and not put it in capital. Yeah. Well, we could. I mean, if you're concerned about spending the money on gravel, we could spend the money on gravel. <laughs> we can do that. Well, I mean, worst case scenario. No, what I'm saying is, if you're saying that you don't want to lose it if it's there, and we lose it. Worst worst case scenario, we we have a good year. We don't have to spend all the money. We're we're flush with cash, right? Mm -hmm. Which we all know how that goes. Mm -hmm. But let's just say, let's be optimistic and say that's the case. There's nothing stopping us from from taking a line item like that and stockpiling some gravel. I just don't have some stuff for the, the for the. I usually do. For the next, we have for the next event, now. right? So, I, that's fine. And, and that last year, you want to remember, uh, it was a very interesting point you brought up when it took to deliver it. I think we only had one truck that was running at that time. Right. So we hired a good trucks. amount of money. Huh? We hired a lot of trucks. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. 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 Thank you. And yeah. as far as mud is concerned, you don't want to put gravel in. You add gravel to mud, you just make more mud. You have to put clean stone. So, this so change mud mitigation to like forty thousand, or I mean thirty-five thousand, or yeah, thirty-eight fives in the middle. Thirty-eight five. You want to go thirty-eight? Wait, I'm five? sorry. Are you talking about um, no, the mud mitigation? mitigation. Right, but instead, of, instead of or instead of so that's trucking and material. Trucking and material, but that doesn't sound like enough. <laughs> But you said we spent seventy thousand on that. The okay, but all, but Liz, all, all, all we're trying to do here is, and we, you know, we're going to go through this. We're going to find well, a few okay. thousand dollars here and there as we go through the all the line items in this budget. But we're trying to look at the big numbers. Right. I know. We, I mean, we didn't have it in the budget before, and we we had to do it. So now we've got something in the budget. We haven't been budgeting anything for it before. And we have something new. So just, yeah. just to your point, Liz, right. that you didn't feel like it was enough before we didn't have anything. Oh, we didn't have it. Okay. We have something new, though. This right, year is there we something have new? Am I missing tailings. something? No. No tailings. The, the, stu the stone that comes, the byproduct from screening the sand in our sand pit. And we've used that a couple of times. We Already? Used it, this yeah, year? Yeah, he used it the just other day. Just past your house. Yeah. In that mud hole there. Okay. Just past uh, McCullough Hill. I don't know how many how many thousand yards we got, but we got a few. And we used some on Center Road. Yeah. Where the mud yeah. is just horrendous. And some of our and we've got the ground up we've got the ground up asphalt too, right? Mm -hmm. Which is combined with gravel. Yeah. 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 My plan for that was the the finger roads, not the main arteries. Yep. The yeah. Yeah. And so. Just you know, we're gonna we're gonna beat ourselves up here. It's it's seven o'clock. But Dorinda, I know in jeopardy. Are uh, we working just on the high the public works section of this right now? Because no? I have a couple of questions on that. Okay, can I can I just finish my yeah, thing go and ahead. then go ahead? So let's, for purposes of our budget review here, reduce the seventy five to half that and knock out the hundred and ninety eight. Isn't that thirty seven fifty? What? What? Thirty-eight five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Line item. Public work. What's line item? Line item 204 and line item 190. Yeah, no. oh. 203. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I was under public Sometimes my eyes statements. don't line up quite right, <laughs> especially late at night when I've had a. I can handle it, I guess. Okay. I got to be excused. Bye. Right. He's got to go to another meeting. What? Training. Got to train to be oh, a fire. Take some cookies yeah. to the fire department. Yes, take some cookies. Yeah, take some of my cookies too. Yeah, we have to wait to some cookies. No, I mean, we're, to, we're out to the ceremony trying to get rid of our cookies so we don't. Um... Oh. This, is there a paper plate? 18.05. 18, 1805 before special hour. Mm -hmm. Take Sarah's whole plate okay. and the, because you see her. That's at least <laughs> in the realm of reason, I think. Right, which I had said from when we first it, came in, but no, I think I, there's I more there to go away. Yeah, and I mean, I, I will say as the budget committee had this conversation, you know, we were 12 to 15 percent is what we felt like we could realistically take all those. I am. Good. So, good. Um, okay. Well, we're going to find we're going we're going to find some other money here and there, but I think those are the, you know, we've got to think about the wages. We're going to look at that. Um, How's our slush fund doing? Well, I think we need to. What slush fund? Slush fund is yeah, that? Yeah, that was last yeah, year. Yeah, that was last year. Huh? Really so, Eric, sure. before before you go, one of the last questions that I have for the for the highway stuff is, um, you know, the the culverts we've. We've got quite a stockpile of those. We're yep. carrying fourteen thousand dollars in there. What are your feelings on that line item? Does that does that seem reasonable? Is that an area where if we needed to cut something, we could cut something? You, or? you, you could. The, the we've got some, but we only have a few twenty-four inch, and then we got a bunch of eighteen. And if you need to do anything more than that's bigger than eighteen, you and they're You're buying it all. Yeah, and it's it's probably got, I think twenty-four inch is like. Fifteen dollars a foot. So yeah. it adds up twice as much. It, it, it adds up quick. It's expensive to run. Eric, do you have anything before you go right. for a highway the, report? Uh, Any? Um, just we had snow last money, week, uh, and we got some rain coming <laughs> Friday. You can there you go. <laughs> That's all we need to know. <laughs> what about Liz's cookies? Those no, no, no. He took them all. Those. Huh? Her yeah. Why can't you just put gravel in the paving fund? Doesn't, can't you just do that? I mean, it's paving. All right. No. Uh, no. Okay. Thank you. Separate. You'd have to change the paving fund to a road maintenance fund or something like that. It's all stone. Right. These are the best ones. I shouldn't have any of these. Nice try. Next to a car. Jim started to pick hands and things. And these are George Bush's. Okay, Dorinda, I think we are down to at long last the treacherous report, if you have any energy left. So so we're not reviewing any of the budget then? Is that what we're talking about? I, I mean... You mean for line item? Well, well for anything. I budget. mean, I just plugged in all these numbers for the, any item that wasn't presented and then... I mean, when are we going to work on this? Because we have two meetings left and... I know. We're not addressing any of these line items. Really. We gotta go, at some point, we gotta sit down and go right through it. And when will that, I mean, because I have to then take all this and do my thing with it and get everything to Sarah for printing and reports and everything yeah. else. Uh -huh. So, um, I thought that well, was Well, I would say, I don't know, what do, we, what, do we have, what do we have on our agenda for our next meeting, Sarah? Anything well, big? We're gonna meet at the fire department. And then you're going to come back here. The yeah. good news is, the good news is that you have one extra week. Town meeting has never been as late as it is this year. I mean, this is on the end of the cycle. You're at March seventh. That buys you a little time. But but I agree. We need to sit here and go line by line. That takes a lot of time. Well, I guess my question really. for you, Dorinda, is what are your big concern? Like like I, for example, I can't tell you right now what the Well, I mean, I, but certainly what we haven't plugged into any of these numbers is anything we've discussed as far as, um, you know, the computer number now. What are, what are we going to be plugging <coughs> in for that? Um, 
we, I wanted to ask, I had questions for, and maybe um, we can, Victor can answer it, but I had questions about a few of the items within the highway department that just don't seem realistic, but maybe they are. Um, we also had an FY23 highway grant. Is that happening? Because we haven't put any money in for the match, if, but that's probably an in-kind match, so we might be okay there. That's cool. We haven't heard back on that. You haven't heard back on it. No, okay. Just filed but, it. Huh? Just filed it. But that's but it's a budget item if we have to put money into it. But it's twenty percent. Is it in kind? Not sure. Okay, well if not it's fifty five hundred dollars. Um we talked, we haven't talked, I mean, there's a ton of things here that we haven't really talked well, about. Here's, um, here what I, here's what I would suggest. We've, we've, we beat the capital improvement fund to death, I think, for the time being, other than agreeing on what the final number is, whether it's 60,000 or some other number. Um, I think we need to look at each department, every line item, and I'm, you know, I, I, <coughs> I start to lose the, excuse me. <coughs> what was in those pecans? Oh God, I hope you're not. Do you have some funny stuff in there? No, are you allergic to something? <laughs> not that I know of, God. but I seem to be losing my voice. You know, when you get down to the $283 items, I don't I don't get very excited, but the $5,000 items we need to pay attention to. So. Right, right. No, um, I get that, and I'm not questioning $200 items. I'm questioning right. You know these bigger ones. Um, I mean, certainly, you know. So yeah, if we're going to address it at another meeting, I, I just would it help know. if we talked? Can we do that before the next meeting? Is we can just we can tell you whether we think the stuff in the highway budget is right on or some room. Is that legal to do that? You you talking with the treasurer? Yeah. You can There's talk no to the reason treasurer. to talk to the treasurer. Talk to the treasurer. Talk to the treasurer. Not, not, not that we wouldn't bring it up in the meeting, but it, I would think you would sail along through it a lot. I'm not just talking the uh, highway budget. You know, there's like just, I mean, some of them are utility budgets. <coughs> Why if we're spending... Um, I had some question on the utilities. Yeah, stuff. it's like, why are, if we spent $1,800 on electricity, why are we budgeting $4,000? 15% increase. Huh? Boston Electric, 15% increase. Well, that's still, I don't think, would amount to a 2000 double year thing. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, like for Town Hall, if you want to take the electricity, for example. Right. You know, we had a thirty-five hundred dollar budget that we were we were looking at, and now we're we're reducing that by five hundred for this year. Um, you know, there's that fifteen percent, but it went the other way. Right. So yeah. I just had questions as to you know why that was a reduction instead of an increase. Yeah. Well, here's guys. Here's what I would suggest. Here we are once again jumping around all over the right, place. Right. You're all over the place. I think I think what we need to do is. And I'm going to spend some time looking at this budget before our next meeting. I would suggest everybody else do it and pick out, especially you, Dorinda, pick out the ones that you're uncomfortable well, with. We'll go out. through it. We'll go through it department by department instead of instead of jumping here, there, and everywhere and try and make some uh, okay. try and make some sense out of this. Can I still ask the question? I'm still a little unclear about um, so the budget. I'm trying to remember because I get confused with fiscal year. Line item or column D. Mm -hmm. That's the current year we're in. That's the current year we're in. However, the salaries, was that what we budgeted versus what we actually, no, the current year, we gave raises the previous year, right? Well, so, they got both. They got both, yeah. Right, but, but for this budget, um, Fiscal year 2022-23. That was we when, approved that in March of right, and it that's when they got the five percent on July one. That and was, that's when they got the five percent. And was there anything after that that we gave them as a boost? No. Yes. Not no, after the July. I don't think so. Not after, I don't think July. Think after July. Everything was done in. Right. It no, was either right. November, right. December, right. and yeah. then okay. in July. So yeah. my question is, why in this budget for 2023-24? 
are the salary increases, like these variable increases, like 0.82%, like for the town wages for the, um, the road crew, it's 0.38%. Uh, remember, oh, we have three employees, now we have four employees. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's all that right. Everything stuff going changes. On. People's number of hours they're working, which is something else that should be, you know, when we're looking at salary, mm -hmm. you know, are we doing realistic numbers for the number of hours? Like, um, you know, it's should this person, you know, be working, you know, like. I don't want to throw anybody under the hat, but you know, what does somebody on the rec committee do for five hours every week? I don't know. Right. You know, so are we looking at you know realistic numbers when we're doing this? Yeah. Okay, but well, I still feel like I understand what you're saying about the wages. You have different people. Somebody quits. Blah blah blah. But like the number in column E on line one seventy two. Two sixty three nine nine one. Where did that number come from? Which which number? What line? Are Column you? E, line one seventy two. One seventy two. I gotta see what it says. Like, where did you get okay, that number? Okay, so two sixty three nine nine one. Because that came from taking the people's salaries and adding the wages plus a three percent increase, and um. Okay. And it just happens to show up. I understand that the 0.38 percent is because you had an extra whatever you had fewer people or whatever the case may be. You had more people. I don't, I don't know why it's that different, but um, well, because the person that's no longer working for us, the new person is making a different rate of pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Okay, that that makes sense. So, so you have put in, and you said this, but I just want to clarify for the wages. On anything that says wages, there's a three percent increase in their current wage based on the people that are working right now. So those are accurate numbers with a three percent. That's what their current wage is plus three percent. Plus three percent. Okay. Yes. And that's plugging in. That's plugging in an estimate for overtime hours and all that. And other that's stuff allowing too. for and okay. in the the only ones that get overtime hours is the highway and that's estimating 225 hours. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Why is my why am I earning less as select board clerk? Why the percentage. Because I told you it's how it's being coded out into the computer. Because it's not being divided as 49 and 51. Divided at? Uh, I think it's coming up at 50 50 or something like that i don't know it's just it's not your wages isn't any different it's just the way it all got entered into the system why are we making less on the select board? okay guys because it's now it's now quarter after seven we're going to go through this please everyone take a look at this highlight the line items that you want to talk about and what your questions are and we're going to go through it Department by department, line by line, and hopefully we're not going to be here for six hours. Um, Dorinda, is it yes. is there any reason why you can't share um, the actual spreadsheet as opposed to like a PDF of the spreadsheet? Do you not want to do that as like a copy? Well, last time I can do that, but I can tell you everybody started playing with it, and everybody we had about five changes. different versions when everything. Well, got I'm just done. saying something offline that I could play with, not something that would be a real. Time. I wouldn't be I, I wouldn't be touching your budget, but like a right. But then we sat here in a meeting, and no offense to anybody, but it, well, I came up with yeah, right, and I came up with, and it's like okay. So that's exactly has, what Liz so wants they, to do, that's and that's what everybody wants to do, and then we end up with who started with what, right. you know. But I can be happy to send it to you. And you yeah, I mean, I'm it. not going to come up and say, oh, I came up with this or this, but sometimes it's just helpful. To to um, to actually be able to look at the numbers and see what the calculations are. And again, I just like I, spreadsheets. What I really I don't want like PDFs of spreadsheets. <laughs> people to think about is, and you know, you can't do a budget backwards. You got to do a budget from the bottom up. But are we comfortable with a 13, 14, 50 percent, 15 percent increase in our budget request? And I guess I'm hearing from people that we are. 
but I, you know, I, mean, I struggle with it too, Peter. Uh, you know, the the the, the increase is larger increase. than people are probably going to be comfortable with. But I mean, knowing knowing what went into you know the efforts and and where the increases are. I mean, I think it's ex it's defendable. It's I I honestly feel like you know the highway department is doing their due diligence to try to set themselves up for success. You know, the, the capital improvement um, plan, you know, is trying to Brandy, set the town up for success. Let's not, let's, I think not, it's, let's not be I think it's, I'm just saying. I think it's something I, we I, have to present. I get, a, I get a sense that we are getting close to consensus about something in that range. I want to know how Plainfield only came up with 7%. And, and this is my question. I'm asking this seriously. Do towns often not want to raise their budget and then know that they're going to go over budget? Mm. Well, how many so years? So that it's just a softer uh, blow. I mean, uh, Peter, Peter's mentioned before that it, as uh, history presents itself, the board has kind of come to the table with, with an, making an effort, an intentional effort of, you know, I, we don't want to see it exceed, you know, an increase of 5% or 3% or whatever the number is for that year. They've been very intentional about doing that. Doing that time after time creates a situation where, you know, it's the deferred maintenance model, right? And now we're, now we're struggling to catch up. What was last year's? 9.76? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, nine something like 4% more than that. Is that your mm -hmm. percent, Jack? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a lot of room I in the budget to still make tax. cuts because there's many things we haven't huh? talked about, like for instance, this health insurance. I've no. budgeted the no. new person being a single person, even though they're not on the budget, but the potential is they could possibly become on the budget and it could possibly be a family plan as opposed to a right. single person plan. Mm -hmm. We have, but then we have another situation where somebody's going to be coming off the plan halfway through the year. So we have, I think there's, it's more than just, there's a lot of back, you know, digging underneath its hours, it's um, this type of thing. Health insurance is a big one. Um, I also think you could cut $20,000 out of the budget if we paid off the truck that is got one more year on it. You could take that payment out of the debt service and pay for it now and because we have the money, the extra money, and we would bring the budget down twenty thousand dollars that way, but yeah. You know, well the other thing the the other thing which we haven't talked about at all in this budget process is if and how the ARPA funds are that's in this it. and that's exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. ARPA funds, there's, you know, is there going to be some kind of settlement for our tax person? Is there going to be, I mean, I have a whole list of stuff that is, you know, it can't be talked about in five minutes. So. No, I know. I know. The only thing I, the only thing I would say, and I've, I've struggled with that health insurance thing down through the years, is, is, if you really know for certain that somebody's coming on or off the health insurance, that's one thing. But if it's just, oh, we might hire somebody and they might need a family plan, I've never been in favor of putting that in the budget. I mean, if that happens, it happens. Or maybe you put a little money in to, to cover something like that. But it's some of the stuff that we're trying to think about, we're, we're projecting things that are truly unknown. I mean, we have to do the best we can with what we've got. But I'm a big, proponent of at the at the end or near the end of this process and I'm suggesting it needs to be at the next meeting but the number one item on the agenda once we finish up with our little hoodoo with the fire department is to go right through this sucker from end to end line by line and Dorinda you can ask all your no questions and we'll report, no highway report just, just budget uh, budget right showdown <laughs> yeah I just you know there's I, I I'm not so much concerned about where we're at with the budget right now. It's because I think there's a lot of, we can make a lot of adjustments. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've never gone, we, you know, we've, we've jumped and hipped and hopped around all over the place, mostly focusing on the highway budget, which of course is where most of the money is, but there's a lot of other money in here.
So I'm going to say our budget discussion for this evening is concluded. Thank you. Is that okay? Yes. Do you have anything else stirred up by way of a report? Uh, no, I gave you a budget status report. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. Okay, I, we do need to approve the minutes. Wait, hold on. Did we talk about the highway department? Yes. It snowed last week. There's a wicked okay, rainstorm. All right. <laughs> yes, we did. Um, we need to approve the minutes from the December 6th meeting. Is there a motion? I'll move it. Okay, second. Aye, Randy, thank Aye. you. All in favor? Aye. 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 We need to accept Theo Kennedy's resignation from the Budget Committee action likely. Thank you, Theo. Yeah. Yep. For your service. Oh, we need a motion, right? I think Victor just made it. Yeah, okay. You'll second. second it, Liz? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Margaret Schwartz's resignation as emergency management coordinator. I don't know who she is. So that means we don't have an emergency management coordinator? That's correct. Or is it me again? Once you accept that, I think it defaults to you. Right. But let's not talk about that. So we need to find someone. Let's yeah. hope that this rainstorm doesn't. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Motion, that we accept her uh, resignation and thank her for her service to our emergency management committee. Yep. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, orders are going to be signed. I guess they're over there. I haven't I signed yet. yet. Um, any other matters that may come before the board? I do have one thing. Uh, right before tonight's meeting, I got an email from Phil saying the flu has passed through the rest of my family and has finally struck me so i won't be attending tonight also would you please inform the board that i will not be seeking re-election thanks well, i haven't talked to him about that i don't know anything about that other than that other than the email sir what's the deadline for people to get signatures 5 p.m yeah. january 30th so who's up for you're up for re-election you're up for re no i'm not i thought oh, i was not? but i'm not no, it was, Phil. it was Phil and Victor. It's Phil and Victor. No. Oh. Okay, you and I are on the same schedule then. Or no, yeah. you're three years or two years? Three. But yeah, I'm next and I'm year. two years. But and I'm next so, year. yes, on my. I just also want to say that, uh, according, uh, if you saw uh, Jeff Koons' report, Eric was re elected chief for yep. the fire department. So that's yep. great. I'm just going to put that in minutes. Yep. That's yep. cool. Congratulations, Eric. <laughs> and I'm running for two years. What are you on now? Are you on a two or three? Two I think Steve was two years. Yeah. Is that right, Sarah? I don't know. Your 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 petition's downstairs. I'll have to check what number you put in. I Did anyone? I think it was a two year. Yeah, it's two years. Your two years fills three years. That's right. Has anyone not signed? Just um, on a side note, not signed the North Branch Nature Center petition. I have one here. If someone wants to sign it, to get on the ballot. I believe I did sign it. For 2,400? Is there anyone who wants to sign it? 2,400, huh? 2,500. 2,500. They upped it from their 2,000 request. I'll sign it again. She'll bounce me. I've already signed it. As far as resignations going and, and vacant positions, yeah. um, I know periodically you put something on. What are, what are our thoughts about more frequently? I try not to do it periodically. I honestly post it in the board. I don't have any, there's no legal requirement to be put it on the website or on front porch forum, but I do post it on the board, which is a legal requirement. Yeah, I'm just. Within 10 days of resignation. Within 10 days of the board accepting this, I have to post two places and say, this is up. I'm just trying to recognize how difficult it is to fill positions within the activities of the town and, uh, was having a conversation today about just that issue and uh, just came to a recognition that, you know, when something is posted once in front of me, I kind of dismiss it, if you will. But if it's if it's out there more frequently, I might have paid attention to things more. So I was just... I'll put it out there. That's why I put all the, the list of the offices that were open. That yeah, I saw, I saw what you put out on the Front Forge Forum on the other website. day. And, yeah. And I think you should put the deadline for the signature and maybe the link where they can get the form for Bill Gates. I think I had that, but I will do it again. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I agree with Randy. I think that it's for transparency purposes. If, the, if we know that there's an upcoming, um, so far I've really done. I've really made a good job. In fact, I've tried I think you to, have too. I've tried Sorry. to actually include the part that says if the town people don't like who the select board appointed, they can hold their own special meeting with such yes, guys, and signatures and get that person reconsidered. But they didn't know until last year. Yeah, I was just, it was just something I was thinking about today, so. Yeah, no, I would just, just please encourage anybody you know to please run for office because we have a lot of blue things. The blue things. The blue thing? I need the blue things. <laughs> so, so, oh, you know, so with, with that, this. with that, and we're. Yeah, yeah I've got a copy here. I'm saying the uh, meeting is adjourned.